when or which one shall i make as an admin mm, anything uh, the muted one yes Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on lithium ion cell chemistry, calculations and modeling uh, level one course. And it is a part two section of the uh, continuation which we have done from the last week because we had an extensive content. Um, that's why we, we put another part two that uh, we will be get more time to discuss and you know learn more deeper about lithium ion cell chemistry and uh, calculations and also the modeling part of it. Uh, so with all of that, let's, I think, get started the session in a few minutes. Uh, so uh, I think most of you would have been uh, attending the session from the last classes. I believe you already know a bit about decibels, like uh, you might have already know about, uh, you know, uh, the community which you're trying to uh, build and things like that. So I believe that's all constructively understood with everyone. Uh, we'll just take a few minutes uh, to also, uh, you know, lead on to that, and then we'll just get started with the session uh, right away. So uh, I think we have close to, uh, yeah, 23 people uh, participating in the session. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more minutes. Um, All right, so um, Dhatresh has a question. Uh, is this session part two different from the one we had hosted last week? Uh, Dhatresh, it's a continuation of the one which we have hosted last week because the content is extensively uh, bigger. Uh, so we wanted to have it more, you know, um, I would say continued uh, from the last week. Uh, that's why we have kept it uh, as a part two. Uh, it's it's a continuation of that. Um, so is this a repeated course? Uh, I've taken. No, this is not a repeated course. This is part two. The one which you've taken in the last week was a part one. So it's a continuation of the last week. All right. So <clears throat> we're just waiting for some more people to join in. Uh, we are good to start the session. I think uh, if somebody is new here. Um, you know, do let us know what interests you to take part in this course. Uh, you know, how was your learning last week? Um, do you have any suggestions uh, for the course content and things like that? I think we should be good to start the session another three, four minutes. Until then, we just can have a quick discussion each other. Mm -hmm. 
So looking forward to hear from you on the text and charts here. So do you have any suggestions um, uh, for the course? Like what are the other contents you're expecting in the upcoming weeks? Uh, how's the learning going on from the last week? Were you able to practice and stuff like that? So just drop us some messages here so we could just take a few of the answers and uh, we should be good to start the session. Uh, right, so do we have any next session next to? Uh, yeah, Maulishwar, we, with the Decibels community, we have been planning one course every weekend, okay? Uh, so as such, we would want to commit for that. Uh, by committing it to it, yes, there will be one course every weekend. Uh, which you can uh, participate and you know learn and specifically it will be on EV partnering uh, and focused will be on the EV partnering itself. So yes, there will be a courses. Uh, we will host the course by uh, maybe another two days. Uh, so we, we expect to have a course in battery management system in the next week, uh, possibly the motor controls. Um, so uh, fundamentals of motor controls as such, you know. Uh, so we'll keep you posted uh, in the community, maybe another two days. Uh, we should, we should be able to, you should be able to get emails and notifications on that. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks a lot. Uh, we can't, uh, for appreciating. Awesome. So I think we should be good to start, uh, the session, let's say another two minutes. Um, right. So, uh, guys, any questions, if you have, uh, till now, uh, any doubts from the last session? Uh, so we should be good to think about it. <clears throat> Any session on heat generation and cooling of our cells during charging and discharging? Uh, Akash, uh, Akshat, uh, Akshat, so yes, there is a course uh, available with uh, uh, level two, uh, level three, actually. Um, so you could take up, uh, if you visit lms.decibelslab.com, so if you go to the course and uh, there's a course available on level three, where we cover, because as such understanding of the heat generation is a complex topic, which requires a proper modeling tools and you just can't do with, you know, basics of uh, calculations, uh, fundamentals of calculations. So it, it requires a model and that needs to be built in a software. Uh, so that is only possible by advanced courses. So if you're interested, you can surely look for them. I will message you the link here. Uh, so upon your further interest to pursue something, uh, you can always look for it. So there are two courses which might be, you know, uh, utilize, you know useful for you. Uh, I'll share those links. Cool. So, uh, anyone have any questions? Uh, so, if uh, or else, they, do you have anything to have a doubt from the last session? So, we should be good to discuss on that. Great. I think with all of that, um, looks like there is no continued doubt from the last session. So, I think this session would be very exciting if you actually, you know, have taken the last. Uh, uh, session, which is part one. Um, so this would be the continuation of uh, that. So it would be more interesting, you know, if you guys really have taken the last course. Uh, for sure, we would have some interesting calculations and also, uh, you know, uh, exciting uh, journey of battery pack design with Ether and all these things with different cells. So we'll take ahead the journey uh, from here on. I think we should be good to start uh, the session. By the way, good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you uh, for the session on demand cell chemistry uh, calculations and modeling level one part two course. Uh, it's a privilege to host you, everyone. Um, thanks everybody for joining in from all the places. Also welcome Venu uh, for joining in uh, all the way from Sweden to deliver the sessions, even though it's quite very early for you, like six in the morning. So uh, you've been up here uh, to deliver the session and uh, thank you very much for joining in. And by the way, thanks a lot, everybody, uh, for joining in too. Um, so uh, as a part of this today's discussion, so when you would definitely run through what is covered. So it's, it's my privilege to introduce a bit about decibels um, on the one side and uh, as such, uh, also a bit about like community and then to hand over the session to Venu. Uh, to start ahead with this, uh, as such about decibels community. Uh, so 
and decibels community uh, the whole idea which you already already know that you know we want to bring in more number of people into electric vehicle technology development because as such which we see in the country that we are importing a lot of components from another country or also in some cases even the technology itself or comes from europe or china or many other places because i am in constant touch with a lot of oems and a lot of people attend our courses like advanced courses from industry uh so when i interact with them you know the the lot of components uh, even the technology itself is uh, coming from china or or europe or some other parts uh where <clears throat> at a challenging cases it will be tough for us to you know uh you just stick to them uh, by the way we have to improvise ourselves in terms of technology development and the part train so that is the interest for us uh to bring in more number of people uh to add more engineers <clears throat> into the area of <clears throat> into the area of ev uh, by that way we could expect an outcome of you know a uh, uh, good development in technology uh, by training many engineers so with that interest we all kick started the decibels lms and then the decibels ev community so we've been training close to um, i think by now we have around 6000 plus community members across the country and also other countries as well uh engaging in a lot of activities so as such right now we have only courses which is going on every weekend uh in few days ahead so we will be also having um uh like quizzes uh or like uh, hackathons and also about like a job notifications in the ev or uh, even internship notification for students or some project ideas for students and things like that so you could always utilize that platform and you know take as a good journey for you but about decibels uh, i'll not just track too much here because i know you are here to learn about the content and course um so decibels are four business verticals one of the business verticals is learning management systems um which we provide extensive learning opportunity to to gain skills on the ev um our, all the course and content is uh, met par with the industry standards uh, so students have taken the courses were able to get jobs easily and uh, all the courses are a project oriented um so you you do the project that gives you the experience of of uh, equivalent to an industry uh, by that way a lot of our students are getting placements uh, undergoing courses on the one side on their own and also we have coming up with uh, you know employment services too where we are able to provide uh, uh, our own support for students to get job opportunities so the consulting the principals also engages in the consulting activity which is be provided in uh, consulting solutions to startups and also some of the OEMs in India and also parts in Europe for the student so we set up labs uh, on research and development across uh, universities and colleges uh, to do extensive research in the areas of uh, electric mobility uh, all these labs are very unique in its nature than just you know seeing a component you know cut sections and like you know just just a very basics of it not like not just a very basics of it but it's it's more towards you could research you know you could you could fundamentally go deeper and and you know you can build an applications about it uh, that's the way the labs are set up and apart, apart from it the employment services is where we provide a connect between academics and the industry to to uh, get a uh, job opportunities for many students as we connect to industry and also an academics on the one side that's a bit about decibels um as a part of the four business verticals uh i'm sure i i don't don't want to just drag deeper here and you know uh give less time to venue so i'll move on uh into it so this is all possible uh you know we all here today gathered as uh, individuals uh, is because of our community members uh at decibels uh so we have extensive number of community members across the community uh who have been you know greatly involved uh to build this uh, whole community uh, across the country so we have close to 40 member team and um, also uh, other set of people and you know individuals who have been driving the whole uh, community uh, to to have it really going great and thanks everybody for for making this up and coming to the part of today's uh, uh, speaker introduction so uh, we have venu uh, uh, who is joining us from sweden uh, he's a co-founder and a partner in head of decibels lab so venu is also a part of our kd racing team Uh, it's a formal student racing team and also is a part of a uh, kth hyperloop uh, which is a uh, competition by tesla so he uh, like engages in, in like all the activities of partial simulations assets there 
So he's an instrumental person who has been with decibels uh, in, in, in a construction. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for, you know, uh, I sorry I broke out because of the bad internet. So back here now. So uh, but about me, which is already there on the screen. So um, I was part of uh, ITC and through that I worked for Mercedes projects and also uh, I worked for projects on Chrysler in uh, uh, Detroit. Uh, uh, just been an interesting journey to start something in the EV. So we started three years back and the journey has been wonderful uh, to work on electric vehicles still now. Um, so I've been the course director, engaging in uh, all the courses and structuring in all the courses uh, for learners and also interacting with industry to, to bring in the collaboration that our students who are learning here on the platform will always get job opportunities um, and prospective careers as such. So with all that, uh, session to Venu. Um, so uh, over to you uh, to take care of the session and thank you very much. I wish you all the best everybody and enjoy the course. Thank you. Thanks, Suresh. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's good to start the session. Welcome, everyone, uh, for the session on uh, lithium ion cell technology, cell chemistry calculation and modeling part. So, it is a part two. So, we have completed the part one in the last week. So, I'll just uh, run through the what we have done in the last week. So, in the last week, we have started with a like, very basic introduction of uh, battery technologies. So if you talk like battery technology, what are the different types of uh, batteries available? So we divide, uh, we learned about like the class question based on the electrochemical based, primary, secondary on the reserve batteries. So again, in the primary batteries, what exactly is a primary battery? So we learned about that. And in the secondary batteries, what are the different types of secondary batteries? Uh, lead acid, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion technology, okay. So we have uh, classified those into secondary batteries and in the reserve batteries, what is the working principle of reserve battery also. Then we moved on with uh, like battery components. Uh, what are the important uh, components in the battery? Let's say like cathode, anode, electrolyte and the safety components inside the cell and the cell casing. We discussed regarding the battery components and also we discussed regarding like uh, PTC, CID, which are uh, safety components uh, inside the cell. So after discussing regarding the battery components, uh, we moved on with like uh, electrochemistry of the cell. So in electrochemistry, uh, we discussed regarding the oxidation and reduction reactions, what actually happens in the cells. So uh, we discussed what exactly is a redox, uh, redox reactions were. Uh, in reduction, the loss of uh, electrons takes place and then the oxidation gain of, gain of electrons takes place. We have studied regarding that. And next, we started with like uh, some calculations or estimations, such as uh, cell voltage, cell capacity, and uh, energy estimations. So when we are calculating the cell voltage, uh, we have derived the equations how to de how to calculate the cell voltage. So at standard temperature conditions, at and at uh, non-standard temperature conditions. So generally, we derived the equation something as uh, E naught cell equal to E not, e not cathode minus E not anode, where E not cathode and E not anode are the reduction potentials of the cathode and anode materials. That is for like a standard uh, standard temperatures, but at non-standard temperature conditions, uh, we derived the equation uh, which is called as Nernst equation, and we have done some uh, calculations on the particular part. 
then uh, we have derived the cell capacity also similarly where we calculate the cell capacity using the formula zf by m where z stands for like uh, number of electrons participating in the chemical reaction or the redox reaction f the faraday's constant and m is the molar mass molar mass of the active materials so in that way we calculate the cell capacity of our different uh, cells last time we have done for like a uh, zinc and uh, chlorine zinc chlorine cell then we also calculate the energy density uh, which is a product of uh, cell voltage and uh, cell capacity so after, after completion of these three uh, we moved on with like uh, different types of uh, secondary batteries uh, that is a uh, lead acid technology in lead acid technology we have seen like the specifications of lead acid technology what is cell voltage what is the cell capacity and all the stuff and we have uh, seen like uh, how the discharge is happening in the lead acid technology uh, by represent by writing some uh, discharge equations and also we discussed uh, nickel cadmium technology uh, why the nickel cadmium technology has been banned it's because of the toxicity of the cadmium the nickel cadmium technology has been banned and we also looked into like discharge equations of nickel cadmium and uh, we have seen like differences between the lead acid technology and nickel cadmium technology in terms of cell voltage cell capacity and the energy density values so then comes the third one which is the uh, nickel metal hydride technology so uh, uh, as the nickel cadmium technology is banned then it moved on with the uh, nickel metal hydride and then the lithium ion technology so after discussing all these four concepts uh, in depth about like how the discharge equations were happening then we started uh, uh, doing some problems so we have done like a problem for uh, lithium ion technology lithium cobalt oxide based cell so where we have done calculation for uh, cell voltage cell capacity and uh, energy for the lithium cobalt uh, uh, lco based cell so with that uh, last week we ended the session so coming to today's session uh, today's agenda is something like this we'll start with uh, again uh, uh, where we left so we uh, we stopped in the last session in the activity sheet so we'll continue the same activity sheet so that it will give you like uh, some uh, recap on the formulas that we used in the previous session so then i will start with like a lithium ion classification based on their uh, cathode materials and anode materials so uh, after discussing each and every chemistry in depth like what are the pros and what are the cons of each and every lithium ion cell technology we'll move on with like uh, cell parameters such as what is exactly the cell capacity or what is energy density how to calculate those things so each and every uh, definition of each and every term that we have discussed up to now we'll discuss regarding those things and then we have like uh, some activity sheets on uh, ether battery pack uh, calculations like uh, how many cells were connected in series and how many cells were connected in parallel what is the battery pack mass and uh, what is the battery pack volume and all this stuff so we'll be doing those kind of calculations and by the end of the session uh, we also look into like uh, some cell testing topic so what are the different types of uh, cell testing methodologies available so we'll discuss regarding that and I, I hope like by the end of the session you'll get a clear idea on the full battery technology at least the basic concept of uh, batteries okay so yeah now i think uh, it's good to start so here are the uh, here is the activity sheet and uh, here are the problems so if you look at over here we are having like uh, four problems in that uh, in the last week we have done the problem for lithium cobalt oxide cells so what shall we do is today is like uh, we'll try to do it for like a uh, nickel metal hydride lead uh, lead oxide and uh, lithium manganese oxide cells okay so that this will give you like a introduction to what we have done in the last week also if someone had uh, can't attend the last week session so this session also will help you to understand a little bit about those things so yeah i have this uh, activity sheet uh, which is uh, on my screen so uh, as we will be using some data from this particular sheet so i think it it will be good to take a screenshot of this and uh, keep it along with you so it will be easy for us to refer the equations and the data which they have given okay so yeah we'll start the session over here
first we'll start with a, a lead acid question so here they have given the discharge and uh, charge equations for the lead acid battery so these are called like half cell reactions so if you look at over here uh, lead oxide plus uh, if you remember in the last previous session we have discussed what is the anode and what is the cathode and what is the electrolyte right so in the anode it uh, is uh, in lead acid battery anode is a lead and uh, cathode is a lead oxide dilute sulfuric acid is the electrolyte okay so here uh, lead oxide is act acting as a cathode so this is the cathodic reaction and lead is the anodic reaction okay so at anode always the uh, reduction uh, reduction takes place sorry uh, at anode uh, oxidation takes place uh, which means that uh, loss of electrons takes place so if you observe here gain uh, lead is losing electrons so it is converting like a pb plus 2 and uh, so4 minus 2 so if you look at over here the loss of electrons can be easily observed so this is the uh, anodic reaction and this is the cathodic reaction so if you know like uh, which is the cathode and which is the anode and if you know like uh, some data about these things we can calculate the cell uh, cell voltage cell capacity and the uh, energy so what is they what they're asking here to, is to calculate the specific energy uh, joule per kg of lead acid battery using the molar masses uh, lead is uh, 207.2 gram per mole lead oxide is a uh, 239.2 gram per mole and uh, sulfuric acid is a uh, 98.1 gram per mole okay so yeah we'll start doing this but let, let us hit one so uh, we'll be using some references over here so these are the reference uh, for the calculation because uh, we need like uh, reduction production values and all the stuff so again yeah i prefer uh, you take a screenshot of this table so that uh, it will be easy for you to refer the data from this so now starting with the equations no worries, I will try to write each and every equation over here so that uh, you can also easily understand what I'm doing. So first I'm writing about the cathodic equation. So here the cathode is a uh, lead oxide. PbO2 and uh, anode is a uh, lead, which is Pb. Electrolyte is a uh, h2so4 okay so now writing the cathode cathode reaction pbo2 plus hso4 minus so whenever it present like uh, double arrows it means that the re uh, reaction is like a reversible reaction because uh, in the rechargeable batteries, reversible reaction must take place. If it is irreversible, then we can't say that they are like uh, rechargeable batteries or the secondary batteries. They, they will come under uh, uh, primary batteries, which we can't recharge them. So here, this is the governing equation for the cathode. So, and the governing equation for the anode is, PB plus HSO4 minus. Here, HSO4 minus is like a, uh, ionizing the sulfuric acid. So, sulfuric, sulfuric acid get decomposed. It will get into like a H plus and uh, HSO4 minus. Okay. So, that's why it is rea reacting with here HSO4 minus. And PB, uh, it can be like something like this. PB will get divided into PB plus two and uh, electrons, two electrons. So this is the anode reaction. So the overall reaction for this particular thing is like just adding the cathode and anodic reactions. So if you add these two, we'll be getting the overall reaction. Overall cell reaction. 
which is a PbO2 plus Pb plus two times of uh, H2SO4. In this side, uh, we are having like two lead sulfate, PbSO4, and we are having like a water. Okay. So this is the finalized equation of the overall cell reaction. So after writing the overall cell reaction, first thing we are going to calculate is like a cell voltage calculation. So for cell voltage calculation, we know the formula. So E naught cell equal to E naught cathode minus E naught anode. Okay. So here, uh, whenever we say like a E naught cell, which means that the uh, values which we are taking are the values at standard temperature conditions, which means that at uh, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure and one molar concentration of the material or active material okay so that corresponds like a standard temperature conditions so whenever we see like a e naught we, we have to assume that okay we are doing it at standard temperature conditions so here uh, we are doing the calculation for the standard temperature conditions so this is the equation which is used to calculate the cell voltage for the lead acid so now here the e naught cathode value is so as i told you uh, there is a reference table for this so from that particular table e naught cathode which is for lead oxide it is having like a 1.69 volts and e naught anode value is minus 0.13 volts okay so if once if we know like e naught cathode and e naught anode values we can directly calculate the cell voltage, which is nothing but E naught cathode minus anode. So here it is like 1.69 minus of minus 0.13. So it will give you, so please do uh, the calculation along with me and you can put your answers on the chat box so that I uh, also will get to know like uh, whether you are uh, exactly uh, following me or not. So now the total uh, voltage is coming around. Uh, One point eight two okay. So we are done with the E naught cell calculation. So this is the cell voltage of uh, this particular uh, governing equation which we got. So then the next step is like calculating uh, calculating the cell capacity. So how to calculate the cell capacity? So for that, we know in the last week we have discussed regarding the cell capacity and how to derive what exactly is that. So it is just ZF by M where just Z stands for like a number of electrons that were participating in the redox reactions, where redox stands for like reduction and oxidation reaction, and F stands for like a paradise constant, and M stands for like a molar mass, okay? So here one Faraday constant, uh, NF equal to 26,500, uh, sorry, 96,500 coulombs, or that is equivalent to 26.8 amp hour, okay? So whenever we are using 96,500 coulomb in this calculation, then whatever the value will be getting in terms of coulombs. If you use like amp hour, then it will comes in amp hour per gram or something like that. Okay. So now again, uh, if you want to calculate the cell capacity for the whole cell, then the formula we are going to use is like a one by C cell equal to, there is just for like a cathode. So C cathode, plus one by C anode. 
okay so first we'll do for cathode and uh, next we'll do for anode before that uh, we want to know about this molar mass so if you refer the question in the question they have given the molar mass values for each and every uh, element for lead oxide they have given the molar mass and for lead they have given and for also h2so4 they have given it okay so uh, we'll be using those things to calculate the capacity of cathode and anode so first we'll calculate for uh, cathode c cathode equal to zf by m so in the equations we are having like a two electrons which are participating in the redox reactions so i will use z as 2 2 into 26.8 i am using it in terms of amp power divided by cathode is a lead oxide so m for uh, lead oxide is a 239.2 gram per mole okay so i am just keeping that molar mass over here 239.2 okay so if you do the calculation uh, you will get the value 2 into 26.8 divided by 239.2 it is coming somewhere around like a 0.224 gram per per gram okay so if you convert this to the kgs it will be 224.08 amp hour per kg okay similarly we'll do for uh, anode also so molar mass of anode pb is given as 207.2 gram per mole so now c anode equal to zf by m so it is uh, z is 2 into 26.8 amp hour that is for the anode sorry the faraday quantity is 26.8 amp hour and molar mass of uh, lead is 207.2 so this will come around 2.5 8 amp power per gram which is nothing but uh, 258.6 amp hour per kg okay so now we have calculated the cathode and the uh, anode values so now we are we are going to calculate the overall cell uh, the capacity so 1 by c cell equal to 1 by c cathode plus 1 by c anode so now it is 1 by 224.08 plus 1 by 258.6 so this will come around 
yeah specific energy so how to calculate the specific energy so uh, first i'll write like uh, what is a unit of specific energy so that you'll understand what exactly it is specific energy is watt hour per kg okay it means like the amount of energy that is present in one kg of the material okay so here the watt can be represented as volt into sorry watt hour can be represented as volt into amp hour okay so this volt is nothing but the cell voltage and this amp hour is nothing but cell capacity okay but if you are keeping dividing by kg it is for like a specific uh, cell capacity like that so now we know the values of a uh, cell voltage and we know the values of a specific cell capacity so we can directly find out the specific energy so specific energy equal to cell voltage into specific cell capacity okay so now the cell voltage uh, we got like a 1.82 and the specific cell capacity we got around like a 120.19 this is the amp hour per kg and this is the volts so the final value will be 120.19 into 1.82 it is approximately 218.75 watt hour per kg so this is called as a energy density or the specific energy for the particular cell so i think now you got a clear idea like uh, how to calculate the cell voltage cell capacity and the specific energy for a particular uh, given uh, discharge and charge equations okay so yeah if you are done with this uh, we'll move on with uh, the second part second question that is for uh, nickel metal hydride question so in this question uh, first we'll discuss what exactly is the cathode and what exactly is the anode for nickel metal hydride and what is the electrolyte we are going to use so here uh, the cathode is in the nickel metal hydride technology the cathode is nickel oxy hydroxide okay and the anode is metal hydride so electrolyte will be koh which is the potassium hydroxide okay so during the discharge we are going to find out during the discharge phase so during the discharge at anode oxidation takes place so which means that loss of electrons takes place so here anode is the metal with hydrogen so the reaction will be something like this uh, anode uh, uses to anode an plus plus n electrons so that is the discharge equation so here it is being the hydrogen so the discharge equation at the anode it will be h2 plus 2 oh minus gives rise to water plus two electrons okay so that is a governing equation uh, at the anode and from this equation you can observe that two electrons were participating in the oxidation reaction okay so this particular two number of electrons will be used in the cell capacity calculation and similarly the cathode so during the cathode at the cathode uh, reduction will takes place which means gain of electrons will takes place so here the cathodic reaction is two times of uh, nio oh plus two molecules of water plus two electrons 
gives rise to two nickel hydroxide plus two OH minus. Okay. So here why I kept two is for like uh, balancing the equation. So whenever we are doing the whenever we are uh, writing the equations, so we have to take the final equations in terms of uh, balanced equations. So if you are not using the balanced equations, what will happen is like uh, the number of electrons that are participating in the chemical reaction will vary. So if I remove the two here or here, it will become one electron. So the cell capacity will will be changed, right? So that's the reason we have to balance the equation and then only we have to move on with the calculation part. So if you look at over here, two, uh, two nickel is there on the left hand side and two nickels further on the right hand side. Look at the oxygens, two over here and two over here. So total of four oxygens. So here also two hydroxides, OH. So two oxygen, two oxygens. Coming to, uh, come, come to hydrogens, two over here and four, six. Total of six uh, hydrogens coming here. Sorry, it is a two OH. So here we're having two OH and total of four hydrogens, right? Yeah, two hydrogens over here and nickels were balanced, oxygens were balanced, four oxygens has to be there, two over here and two over here. Yes, hydrogens were like two hydrogens here and four hydrogens here. So total six hydrogens. If you look at over here, we are having uh, two times two, so four hydrogens over here and two hydrogens over here. Yes, it is balanced. So now the uh, overall reaction. So it's just like uh, adding both the anodic reaction and the cathodic reaction. So the overall reaction. So metal hydride, here you can just keep in front of uh, MH also because it is just metal hydride, that's why. Plus uh, two times of uh, nickel oxyhydroxide gives rise to metal plus two nickel OH twice. Okay, so this is the oral cell reaction. Then moving on with the cell voltage calculation. So we know how to calculate the cell voltage. E naught cell equal to E naught cathode minus E naught anode. So here the cathode is a nickel oxy hydroxide and a anode is a metal hydride. So from the reference table, we will get to know the values of uh, E naught cathode and E naught anode. So here, uh, E naught cathode value is uh, 0.49. E naught cathode equal to, which is for uh, nickel oxy hydroxide, it is a uh, 0.49. And similarly for E naught anode, it is a uh, metal hydride minus 0.83 okay so if once we know do these two values e naught cell equal to 0.49 minus of minus 0.83 which is equal to and someone tell me the value of this Is approximately 1.32 voltage or 1.32 volts. So here is there is a question over here. LHS four oxygen and on RHS six six oxygens. Uh, we'll look at that uh, once again. So if you look at over here in uh, NiO OH, we are having like a one one, but in the constant side we are having two. So total of like. A, Mm. Here it is. 
two oxygens we can yeah, sorry four oxygens and here it is two so total of six and coming over here it is a uh, four oxygens and here it is two oxygens it is balanced right here we are having one oxygen one oxygen so two two into two is four oxygens and here it is a uh, two oxygens so total of six on uh, lhs and similarly we are having uh, two times two four and here uh, two oxygens so total of six so it is balanced and there is another question over here in this case we don't know the metal and uh, how can we take like a uh, 0.83 yes it depends upon like whatever the metal we are taking but uh, from the data sheet they have given like a uh, generalized uh, metal hydride value for this if you are taking a uh, metal as a uh, say like uh, manganese or uh, lithium or sodium there will be different uh, potential values but but uh, in generalized value for uh, this metal headed mh value is 0.83 you can just refer the what you call uh, the data sheet which i have given yes so after calculating the cell voltage uh, we'll move with the cell capacity calculations so again, I'm writing over here, one by C cell is the total uh, cell capacity, C cathode, plus one by C anode. So first uh, C cathode, equal to ZF by M. So here the Z is like uh, two electrons of participating in this uh, reaction. So it is a uh, two into 26.8 divided by molar mass so here it is given the molar mass for uh, cathode which is a uh, nickel oxy hydroxide as a uh, 57.1 gram per mole okay so this is gram per mole and this is amp hour per kg So this is just amp hour, 26.8 amp hour. So the final value will be, can someone tell me the value of this? It is a 0.9387 amp power per gram, which is nothing but 938.7 amp hour per kg. Okay. And similarly for anode, it is a ZF by M. So it's two into 26.8 divided by molar mass of this uh, particular uh, MH value. So in the data sheet, the MH value is a uh, If you look into the data sheet, yeah, in the it is given as ninety one point seven. Otherwise, uh, sorry. So if you look at in the question. Calculate the theoretical specific energy density of a nickel metal hydride battery by assuming all the reactions are fully joined. The molecular weights of nickel oxy hydroxide, water, and nickel hydroxide, MH, and M, they are given specifically for M. M is uh, 91.7 gram per mole. Okay. So for uh, nickel oxy hydroxide, it is 91.7. For water, it is a uh, 18 gram per mole. For nickel hydroxide, it is 92.7. For metal hydride, it is a uh, 57.1. And for metal itself, it is 56.1 gram per mole. Okay. So now, if you are in the equation, you are taking just uh, metal, it is 56.1. But we are taking here the metal hydride, so it will be 57.1 gram per mole. So the same value I'm taking it over here, 57.1. Sorry, it is not 
7.1 so this will come around i think we have done what is the value we are getting m for nio oh from the question it is for nickel oxy hydroxide it is 91.7 and m for metal hydride it is 57.1 so this is for cathode and this for anode. So I think then here we have to take 97.1. We have taken the wrong value for a cathode value. Sorry for that. One by C cell equal to one by c cathode plus one by c anode c cathode equal to zf by m which is 2 into 26.8 divided by 97.1 so that is for cathode and anode ZF by M, which is 2 into 26.8 divided by. So here the metal hydride is 57.1. So yeah, now we, you will get a cathode and anode. In the previous case, we got confused with the cathode and anode values. So if you do for the two cases, these are 2 into 26.8 divided by 97.1. It is a 0.552 amp power per gram, which is nothing but 552 amp power per kg. Okay, and similarly uh, for anode, it is uh, 2 into 26.8 divided by 57.1, which is 0.938 amp hour per gram which is equal to 938 amp hour per kg okay so now 1 by c cell equal to 1 by adding these two 552 plus 1 by So when we add these two values, one divided by 552 plus of one divided by 938. So it is coming 2.877 into 10 power minus three. So C cell will become one by 2.877 into 10 power minus three. So it's approximately like a 347.5 amp hour per kg. Okay. So here there is a question that uh, uh, for cathode it is uh, 91.7 or 97.1. Yeah, whatever me, uh, okay, no worries uh, in that value just small change in the value will happen but yeah concept wise it's okay it then it will come around like a 360 something like this the total cell capacity value no worries and there is a question asking that unit of cell capacity must be amp hour per amp hour mole per kg yeah when you multiply mole into uh, amp hour you'll get the final unit as amp mole is not having like any uh, dimensional 
what you call that unit when you multiply with the particular unit it will change to that thing it means that per uh, mole of uh, element something like that okay so now we will calculate the specific energy specific energy equal to cell voltage into specific cell capacity so we got cell voltage as a i hope it is approximately 1.32 and now we got like a 347.50 ampere per kg and this is the volts so it is a 1.32 into 347.5 just giving 458.7 watt hour per kg okay this is the specific energy make a note of all these values uh, because we are going to compare these values with like uh, uh the real time values uh these are like all the calculations which we are doing are called as a theoretical calculations okay so when we compare this uh, theoretical calculation with the real time calculations uh, you will observe some of the changes you will observe changes in the voltage and you will observe changes in the what you call uh, capacity values and energy density values and i will give you the reasoning for that also why the uh, changes were coming and all the stuff okay so there is a question over here uh, why we are not using the nernst equation for calculation of cell voltage so here uh, we are doing the calculation at standard temperature conditions which means like at 25 degrees celsius and uh, one atmospheric pressure and one molar concentration but if we are asked to do the calculation at particular temperature let's say like at 30 degrees celsius or 40 degrees celsius then we'll be using the nernst equation because that is not at the standard temperature conditions okay so here in the uh, specified questions they haven't asked you to calculate at particular temperature okay that's the main reason we are not doing it uh, we are not using the nernst equation so yeah moving ahead uh, we are having the third question that is a uh, lithium uh, question lithium uh, technology so in the last uh, session we have done one question and now we are going to do the second one so the lithium manganese oxide uh, question because we have done the last time lithium cobalt oxide so if you look at over here they're asking us to find the theoretical specific energies for lithium ion batteries with the following two chemistries okay so lithium manganese oxide so in the lithium manganese technology or uh, lithium ion technology so the anode is like a lithium carbide and the cathode is uh, metal oxides so it can be lithium cobalt oxide it can be lithium manganese oxide or it can be like lithium nickel oxide so it can be anything and there are like a nickel manganese cobalt and nickel cobalt aluminum there are different types of cells so here they're asking us to do for lithium manganese oxide cells and they have given the governing equations for these things also okay so if you look at over here 0.66 electrons are participating in the reaction why the 0.66 reactions or uh, participating is like uh, if you uh, try to balance this equation you are getting like 0.66 which means that 0.66 percentage of lithium has been used in the lithiated carbide actually uh, we are using anode as graphite but it is uh, intercalated with the uh, lithium okay so that's the reason we are getting 0.66 electrons so we'll directly start with the calculation of uh, e not cell value or otherwise i'll write equation over here 0.66 uh, lithium plus plus 0.66 electrons lithium 0.34 manganese oxide gives us the uh, cathodic equation yes gives rise to lithium manganese oxide this is at the rate cathode 
and similarly at the anode we are having lithium 0.66 c6 plus sorry this gives rise to 0.66 lithium ion plus plus 0.66 electrons plus six car six carbons okay so these are the anode and these are the cathode if you write the overall cell reaction just adding these two so this 0.66 electrons will get cancelled and this will be like a and this 0.6 uh, lithium plus also will get cancelled so li 0.66 carbide plus li 0.34 manganese oxide gives rise to lithium manganese oxide plus 6 carbide okay so this is the overall cell reaction so here the cathode is lithium manganese oxide limno2 and anode is lithium carbide actually it will be lic6 but to what percentage of uh, uh, lithium added in, it will depends upon the equation so here it is 0 0.66 percentage so it will become li 0 0.66 c6 okay so for this particular things so we will be having the e0 uh, cathode and e0 uh, anode values so here the e0 cathode for uh, lithium manganese oxide is so from the data sheet you can get the value for uh, manganese oxide it is like uh, 1.28 and similarly for uh, lithium carbide E0 anode, it is a uh, minus 2.8 volts. Okay, so once if you know these two values, we can calculate the cell voltage. E0 cell equal to E0 cathode minus E0 anode. This equal to the cathode value is uh, for manganese oxide it is a uh, 1.28 minus of uh, minus 2.8. So this will give you approximately 4.08 volts. Okay, so there's a cell voltage. So similarly, the cell capacity, again, the same thing, C cell equal to one by C cathode plus one by C anode. So cathode here is a lithium manganese oxide. So ZF by M. Here 0 0.66 electrons are participating in the reaction. So 0 0.66 into F is a 26.8 divided by molar mass of uh, lithium manganese oxide. So it is a 86.9 gram per mole. So this will give you like capacity of the cathode. So it is coming 0.203 amp hour per gram, which is equal to 203 amp hour per kg okay. and similarly c anode which is uh, zf by m 0.66 into 26.8 divided by molar mass of the lithium carbide is like 72.06 okay so here i am taking directly lic lic6 value uh, for uh, uh, anode but actually we have to take it like a 0 0.6 0 0.66 times of lithium and a six times carbon so for carbon it is a 16 to 12 uh, which is like a 6 uh, 12 uh, 72 and a 0 0.6 times of a uh, lithium so for lithium it is like a 6.94 so 0 0.66 times of a uh, 6.94 is like a 
4.5. So 4.4.5 plus uh, 72 will give you like uh, 76.5. Okay. So this is for uh, just lithium carbide 72.06. But as we are using a uh, Li 0.66 C6, then it will become. This is for this particular case. 0.66 into 26.8 divided by 76.5. Okay, so if you know the atomic numbers of uh, elements and if you know like uh, the equation, we can directly calculate out the molar masses using the equation. Okay, so this will give you two thirty one point. Amp or per kg. So once if you know the cathode and anode values, we can directly calculate the total cell capacity one by C cell equal to one by two thirty one point uh, two plus uh, one by two not three. Which is uh, 9.25 into 10 power minus 3. So that I'm C cell equal to 10.08.09 it's coming 108.09 amp power per kg. Okay, so that is the total cell capacity of lithium manganese oxide. So now after knowing the cell voltage and cell capacity, we can calculate the specific energy. Specific energy equal to cell voltage into specific cell capacity. So it is 4.08 into 108.09, which gives you like a 441.01 watt hour per kg. Okay, so this is the specific energy. So these are the calculations uh, for the three cases. Now what we're going to do is like, uh, we're going to compare the values with the real time values. And we'll see like, uh, what are the change in the values we are getting. Okay. So these are for like, uh, in that same table sheet, uh, there are like data for comparison of uh, theoretical values and the practical battery. So in this slide, I'm just showing for the primary batteries, which are like uh, not non-rechargeable batteries, but we have to look into like uh, rechargeable batteries, which are secondary batteries. So first, if you look at the first one, which is the lead acid battery. So first we have done for uh, lead, lead acid PB, is the anode PV what is the cathode and this is the governing equation which we have done. So in that uh, we got like a uh, cell voltage values. These are the theoretical values. And these are the actual values. Okay. So we got somewhere around like. Uh, this is amp power per kg and this is the volt first column and third column. We are looking for last fourth column. Sorry. Yeah. So this is the voltage. This is the amp hour per kg. And this is watt hour per kg. Okay. So we got uh, for the first case, our cell voltage we got less. Yeah, we got like 1.82. But uh, if you look at the cell capacity value, we got cell capacity exactly the same 120 amp hour per kg. And the uh, cell energy, we got approximately like 220 uh, watt hour per kg. But in the real case scenario, the cell voltage is uh, 2.0. And if you look at this, uh, it is watt hour per kg. Sorry.
yeah so this is a water per kg actually it has to be 252 water per kg but in the real case scenario we are getting only 35 water water per kg what might be the reason for that and similarly if you look into the like nickel metal hydride nickel metal hydride is somewhere over here we got the same values of a uh, cell voltage of uh, 1.35 and uh, we got like amp hour per kg is uh, 178 and watt hour per kg is uh, 240 but in real case scenario the voltage has been decreased to 1.2 and the uh, watt hour per kg is 100 it has to be 240 but it has been decreased to 100 so a total of like 140 watt hour per kg has been decreased similarly if you compare like uh, for lithium manganese oxide so here is the lithium manganese oxide okay so here the cell voltage is 3.5 and uh, amp hour per kg is uh, 286 and watt hour per kg is like uh, 1001 okay so this is somewhat different values uh, okay maybe here in the calculation they have taken as uh, just uh, manganese oxide uh, i mean like uh, just uh, cathode as a manganese oxide without considering the lithium so that's the, that might be the reason they got different values but yeah if you compare with the real time values or whatever the values we got it is uh, we got like a 4.08 as our voltage but in real time it is decreasing to 3 and uh, watt hour per kg it is uh, 120 we got somewhere around like uh, uh 400 something like that right we got for uh, yeah 441 okay so instead of 441 it is like just like 120 uh, watt per kg so what do you think like what might be the reason for this particular thing so can someone like uh, answer in the chat box what do you think is the reason for those things why the real time values were uh, changing compared to the theoretical values okay so here uh, if you observe in the uh, cell capacity calculation we are using the formula z f by m okay so there m stands for molar mass here in the molar mass calculation we are considering only the molar mass of the active material which we are using right we are not considering the total mass of the cell so here in the cell as we discussed in the previous session there are like different types of, I mean, different parts, components, cathode, anode, electrolyte, separator, casings, and uh, safety equipment such as PTC, CID. Each and every component uh, present in the cell will be having a weight. So we are not ca considering that particular uh, weight. So if you consider that particular thing, C equal to ZF by M. So M is inversely proportional to capacity. So as molar mass increases, the capacity will decrease okay so that's the reason whenever we consider like the whole mass of the cell the capacity of the cell will be decreased and there are some other reasons like uh, losses yeah there will be losses such as uh, internal resistance losses or uh, voltage drop losses and everything will be there but the main reason for this is because of the mass increment so that's the reason uh what they're doing is like they're trying to decrease the weight of these uh, materials that goes into the cell manufacturing. So if we can decrease the cell mass, then we can achieve like high cell capacities and which we are, and where we can achieve like a high energy densities. Okay. So that that's one of the reason like uh, which leads to development of pouch cells. So if you compare like cylindrical cells and prismatic cells, in cylindrical cells we will be having some metal casings uh steel some metal steel is used whereas in uh, pouch uh, prismatic cells they'll be having prismatic casing with aluminium or uh, some other material but whereas in pouch it is like uh, some kind of uh, layered or it will be like a uh, just uh, very thin layered uh, paper kind of thing will be used as a casing okay in the main aim is to reduce the unwanted uh, weight of the cell so that we can achieve like a high cell capacity so these are the main reasons 
and because of this components actually like 50 to 70 percent of uh, value will be reduced the theoretical value will be reduced to like uh, 50 percent or 70 percentage so I, for that i just want to show you a comparison over here so here i am taking the two cells uh, which is having like a 100 amp power cell and the 10 amp power cell one is an energy based cell and another one is like power based cell okay so if you look at over here uh, for the energy based cell which is a 100 amp power considering only the negative one positive cathodes the total weight is corresponding like 69.7 percentage of total mass let's say like uh, if it is a hundred percentage mass is equal to 100 kgs so 69.7 percent is corresponding to like approximately 70 kgs okay so that's the only uh, active material which means like cathode and anode but coming to other parts such as tabs in plates terminal assemblies core container electrolyte separators and uh, other casing materials etc it is corresponding like 30 percentage which means like 30 kg so this is the extra mass we are adding to the uh, active material so because of this 30 percent of extra material the cell capacity has been decreased from theoretical value it will at least decrease by like a 50 50 percentage minimum so if you compare like uh, this high power 10 amp or cell also if you observe it is like 46 percentage is uh, active materials which are the materials responsible for the capacity or the voltage the remaining 54 percentage is because of the uh, remaining materials these are all uh, extra materials so here it is like uh, the extra metals are overcoming the uh, the main materials which are active materials okay so in this case it might go to like a sound to a person process also so that's the main exam uh, that's the main reason in lead acid technology instead of uh, whatever the value we are getting like in lead acid we are getting uh, approximately 237 but finally we are end up with like 35 that's the main reason is because of this extra addition of the masses okay so to overcome these things uh we are developing the lithium ion pouch cells and something like that okay and still the research work is going on at this side to reduce the mass of the components and to achieve like high energy densities and high power densities and high cell capacities okay so yeah so now uh, what we're going to do is like, uh, so by this, uh, we are went with uh, all the types of uh, calculations, cell voltage, cell capacity, and specific energy calculations. And in the, in the previous session, we have discussed regarding the, what you call lead acid technology, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, and lithium ion technology. So in this present slide, what I'm going to do is like, uh, why we are mainly discussing regarding the lithium ion technology. So what are the reasons, okay? So if you observe here, I have compared all the values such as a cell voltage, specific energy, energy density values, specific powers, cycle life, the charge time and everything. So if you look into the comparisons, cell voltage is uh, two volts for lead acid. For lith uh, First, I will discuss oh, in, in lithium ion technology. I mean, like uh, I won't discuss separately of all the cathode materials available. We'll take all them as a common thing as a lithium ion technology. Okay. So if you consider the average uh, voltage for lithium ion technology is approximately around like 3.6 voltage. So it means that it's almost uh, three times more than nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium technology. And it's almost double for uh, lead acid technology. Okay. So what's happening if you have like a more voltage range, what will happen? So that I'll discuss in the coming slides, what will happen? So for timing, what I can ex uh, give you an example of that. So if you're using like, uh, if you want to manufacture like 48 volt battery pack, okay, I'm using lead acid, I'm using nickel metal hydride and I'm using lithium ion technology. So number of cells needed is like, uh, if I'm using two volt cell, it will be like 24 cells. If I am using 1.2, it will be like uh, 40 cells. And if I'm using 3.6, it will be 13 cells approximately, okay. So let's assume that each cell is having the same mass, which is 100 grams. So 24 into 100, 40 into 100, and 20, 13 into 100, which is 24 kgs, 40 kgs, and 13 kgs. Okay. So if you are, if you want 48 volt battery pack, so if you want 48 volt battery pack, if you are going with lead acid battery, you are getting battery pack mass of like uh, 24 kgs, and if you are going with nickel based uh, chemistry you are getting like 40 kgs 
and if you are going with lithium ion technology you are getting like 13 kg which means that uh, if you are going with lithium ion compared to nickel metal hydride 40 minus 13 equal to approximately like 27 kg of mass has been saved in the battery pack okay so which means that your whole overall weight of the vehicle will be decreased and you can achieve like better performances so that's the one comparison of cell voltage the next one is a uh, specific energy so as i told you before specific energy plays a very important role in range if you want like more range you have to select a cell which is having high specific energy and if you want like more performance you have to select a cell which is having high specific power so if you look at over here uh, for uh, lead acid it is 30 to 40 and for nickel cadmium it is 40 to 60 nickel metal hydride it is 60 to 120 and for lithium ion it's approximately ranging from like 100 to 260 okay so which means that compared with uh, these three technologies lithium ion technology is having like a more specific energy which means that it can give you like a more range for a given particular battery pack size okay we can say like a, a three times the lead acid and two times the nickel metal hydride we can achieve the range and the same thing energy density uh, actually when we are speaking like a specific energy there will be two terms one will be in terms of mass and another one will be in terms of volume so the one which is in terms of mass is called as a gravimetric energy density so that is represented by watt hour per kg so up to now what we have done uh, energy density calculations or the specific energy calculations watt hour per kg they are called as gravimetric energy density values if you are doing it like a watt hour per liter then they are called as volumetric energy density which means that per 1 cm cube of uh, volume how much of energy it can provide or for 1 uh, m cube of volume how much of energy it can provide so in that comparison also lithium ion technology stands the highest compared to lead acid and lithium uh, nickel based and the fourth comparison is like a cycle life of course lithium ion technology is having range, ranging from uh, 500 to 2000 uh, cycle lives for based on different cathodes we are going to use but uh, for lead acid and nickel metal hydride of course they are having uh, less uh, cycle lives compared to lithium ion technology and uh, self discharge so the self discharge is like uh, if you buy the cells and if you keep the cells in your uh, shelf and you are not using them for a particular period of time so then they will start uh, losing their capacity so here the nickel based cells were having like high self discharge rates compared to lead acid technology and lithium ion technology in comparison of all these four technologies lithium ion technology is having like a very self discharge which means that if you store them for like a particular period of time the amount of energy lost from these four types of cells it will be less in the lithium ion technology okay so that's also one of the reason behind uh, going behind the lithium ion technology and the other reasons were like a uh, voltage range we are having a more voltage uh, range or operating region and more operating temperature region okay we can operate uh, in the temperature region like a uh, but charge if you look at over here it is 0 to 45 and discharge is like minus 20 to 60 degrees celsius and safety requirements yeah of course uh, safety plays a very important role there there are some problem with the uh, safety with the lithium ion technology we have to be very careful with the uh, lithium ion technology cells so it needs like uh, extra safety parameters so that's why we are using like uh, battery management systems to control the voltage or to control the current and to control the temperature so that's the one backdrop of that it needs like extra safety but whereas nickel cadmium and uh, lead acid they are like uh, toxic materials so coming to the toxic level they are very high they are having like high toxicity levels compared to lithium ion technology in lithium ion technology again the cobalt cobalt is having uh, uh, i mean like it is a costlier material so we have to consider all the things so overall what we can say is like the main parameters that we have to compare when we are selecting the cell is cell voltages specific energies or energy densities in terms of uh, volumes and specific power and cycle life okay so these are the primary parameters and next things will be the secondary parameters so when we are comparing the primary parameters so the lithium ion stands the in the highest when compared with other technologies so that's the main reason we are mainly focusing on lithium ion cell technology okay
so i have i hope you got like clear idea like uh, why we are uh, back of lithium ion technology and reasons for that okay so yeah so here we'll take a small break of like uh, five minutes and then we'll start again So yeah, we can start the session over here. So now uh, the main concentration for the next one hour or uh, next 45 minutes will be mainly on lithium ion cell technology and the classification of uh, cells or cell chemistries in the lithium ion cell technology based on the cathodes and what are the pros and cons within the lithium ion technology of different chemistries. Okay. So starting with lithium ion cell technology, uh, as I told you before, Lithium ion batteries are having like a unmatchable combination of a high energy and power density. Because if you look at like at other cells, they won't be having, a, if some cells are having high energy, then they won't be having like a high power. Okay, you can't say like a, if a cell is high energy cell, then you can, you can't say that, okay, as it is high energy, it will be the high power. We can't say directly like that. Okay, so lithium ion is having the advantage that it's having the best combination of uh, both high energy and high power density so that's the reason like uh, we are using this lithium ion cell technology in all our applications nowadays like uh, portable electronics or power tools or uh, electric vehicles hybrid electric vehicles and all the applications okay so coming to the electrochemistry of this uh, lithium ion technology it mainly based on like a uh, lithium ion movement in the from anode to cathode and cathode to anode Okay, so during the discharge cycle, what will exactly happens is like a lithium atom moves from a anode. I mean, like it will get decomposed as a lithium plus and electrons. So lithium plus, which means like if we take lithium, it will be into lithium plus plus electron. Okay, so this lithium will move from anode to cathode during the discharge case. And during the charge case, this moves from cathode to anode this is the discharge and this is charging case okay 
so because of movement of this lithium ion i mean the the, the battery name has come as like a lithium ion battery because that's the main uh, component in the lithium ion battery and one more thing is like the lithium ions are very small enough because uh, it stands third in the atomic table and the diameter is also very small okay in terms of mass and in terms of uh, diameter it is very small compared to other uh, elements so which makes uh, easier to flow through the what you call a separator and the electrolyte because uh, now we have to select the select, uh, separators and electrolytes right so these separators has to allow the ions to flow through them so because of uh, lesser diameter so lithium ion can easily flow through like a uh, micro permeable separators which are which is existing between the iron and cathode okay and uh, because of the smaller size we can store like a uh, more amount of lithium for a given amount of space let's say like uh, they have given this much one meter square of surface area okay so if you are taking some other element it might be having more diameter so we we can't store like more active material for a given amount of area whereas lithium is having like a very small amount of uh, diameter it can we can store like large amount of uh, active material for a given particular area so which in which indirectly increases your uh, cell capacity and which indirectly increases your uh, voltage and also like uh, what you call uh, watt hour per kg energy density of the cell okay mainly the amount of active material that we are inputting into the cell determines your cell capacity and the potential difference between your cathode and anode determines your cell voltage so as i told you here if you observe uh, there are like different structures for cathode and anode but anode will uh, the common anode we are going to use is like a lithium carbide it is a lithiated carbide okay so here if you look at uh, the graphite structure it will be having some hexagonal shape uh, structures so all these uh, everything in the lithium based will be like having some layers i'll show you the structures also so now the classification of lithium ion technology so the classification is based on like uh, whatever the cathode we are going to use so based on that uh, the lithium ion technology has been defined to like uh, this lithium cobalt oxide lithium manganese oxide nickel cobalt aluminum oxide and nmc which is a nickel manganese cobalt lithium ferrous phosphate and the final one is like uh, lithium titanate oxide okay so coming to the lithium cobalt oxide the first one uh, it can be represented as a lithium lco where l stands for lithium c stands for cobalt and o stands for oxide so this particular application you can see in your uh, mobiles or uh, if you uh, if you observe like a boeing uh, 787 uh, aeroplane they have used this particular uh, uh, type of battery in that particular uh, okay coming to the lithium manganese oxide uh, don't worry about this comments i will discuss in depth about those things comparison pros and cons so lithium manganese oxide which is which is represented as a lmo it is using like a uh, power tools uh, like drilling machines and all the stuff with industrial applications because it is having like a uh, low energy densities uh, uh, very compared to other technologies so we are using them for uh, industrial application like small power tools and all this stuff nickel cobalt aluminum which is having like a high stability and now they are used in like a uh, cars electric cars and uh, hybrid vehicles and all the stuff if you look at the tesla they are using like uh, nca and nmc based uh, cells so the last one that is a uh, lithium ferrous phosphate so again it is used for uh, the backdrop of lithium ferrous phosphate is having like a uh, less cell voltage it is having like 3.2 as cell voltage <clears throat> and coming to the anode materials uh, we are commonly as i told you we are using the graphite but uh, nowadays uh, to increase the like uh, capacity of the cell and also like to increase the energy density so uh, they are adding a little bit of silicon to the uh, graphite like a small amount of like in the percentage like 3 to 5 percentage if you look at the tesla um, three models uh, they are having like different levels of uh, silicon okay but they tried uh, only with the silicon instead of a uh, graphite so what they observed is like if they are using silicon as the anode they are reaching like highly extremely high capacities but uh, poor uh, cycling performance like uh, for uh, one particular uh, cycling i mean like cycling in the sense like a one charge and one discharge cycle 
okay we are losing most of, amount of energy in that and then comes the lithium titanate oxide so it giving like high rate capability rate capability in the sense like a uh, high discharge rates and charge rates can give you like more amounts of current for a particular period of time but the negative of this is like uh, it's having very less cell voltage approximately somewhere around like uh, nearly uh, equivalent to nickel metal hydride okay so these are the classifications so based on this we are having now lithium cobalt oxide lithium manganese oxide and nmc nca lfp and lto okay so lithium cobalt oxide is the first uh, lithium ion cell technology that has been used in uh, 1991 which is introduced by like uh, uh, sony and then after as cobalt is a uh, highly costly and it is having like some thermal issues then we moved on with uh, lithium manganese oxide in lithium manganese oxide also we are having some pro uh, problems with that so then comes the nickel manganese cobalt and this kind of cells okay so we'll discuss about these things in depth one by one so yeah first one is like a lithium cobalt oxide uh, lco based chemistry as i told you this is the first technology uh, that has been commercialized by sony in 1991 okay so in this if you look at the structure it is having like a layered structure which means that if you observe the blue color represents the cathode which is a lithium cobalt oxide and the green ones okay those are the lithium ions okay so lithium ions will be moving from anode to cathode right so whenever it comes from anode side it will go uh, and uh, intercalate uh, between the layers of uh, cathode which is cobalt oxide cathodes okay so this that's why it is called as a layered structure and if you observe the moment it will be the ions will be having the moment in the direction of uh, b i have represented the axis over here a b c so they will be having the moment in the direction of b okay so that's why it is a layered structure why why it got layered structure is the cobalt and lithium so they will be located in the octahedral sites okay so as they are locating in the octahedral sites because of this they got like a, a layered and form a like hexagonal shape so if you look at this uh, it will be something looking uh, it, it is very difficult to visualize the image over here but yeah they'll form like hexagonal shape in the uh, and these hexagonal shapes connected to each other forms a layer okay that's because of uh, this uh, lithium and cobalt uh, occupying the octahedral sites okay so as i told you the cathode is a lithium cobalt oxide anode is lithium carbide and electrolyte is a lippf6 or a lithium boro uh, fluoride so this particular cell is having like nominal voltage of 3.6 and the specific energy in the range of like 150 to 200 watt hour per kg cycle life is a uh, 500 to 1000 applications they are using like uh, all mobile mobile phones uh, tablets laptops or uh, cameras and uh, as i told you the application has been used in the boeing 787 and we have seen the accident which has happened in the boeing 787 okay so if we compare like uh, as i told you before there are like primary parameters which has to be compared so here uh, the one represents uh, it's like a uh, very less and the five represented is good okay so here the specific energy is good for this particular uh, lithium cobalt oxide cell coming to the specific for it is uh, less and soc operating region so what exactly soc operating region i'll discuss in the coming slides but before that i'll just introduce that so for lithium ion cell technology as the soc goes on so this is the soc axis and this is the voltage so they will be having something like this so this is called as a operating region okay the area under the voltage curve discharge curve represents your operating region so it is um, it's okay like it's having like average operating region for lithium cobalt oxide compared with other uh, technologies in last i'll show you like uh, which technology is having more okay and coming to the cycles uh, it is having like a uh, 500 to 1000 cycles whereas a uh, nickel manganese cobalt is having like high number of cycles it's having some safety problems that is mainly because of thermal thermal stability it is not having a 
it is not that stable when the temperature increases and cost yeah it's okay uh, it's not that uh, i mean like it's not that highly costly this particular lithium cobalt oxide cells only the sorry it is highly costly because of uh, cobalt okay so coming to the pros it is having high theoretical specific capacity somewhere around like a 274 uh, milli amp hour per gram so if you remember uh, in the pre previous calculations we have calculated the cell capacity right so that cell capacity is here it is having like a 0.27 amp hour per gram which is like 274 amp hour per kg and high theoretical volumetric capacity which is like a 1363 or 1.363 amp hour per centimeter cube and it is having low self discharge and a high discharge voltage of uh, 3.6 volts it's having good cycling performance but coming to the cost it is having a high cost cobalt and low thermal stability capacity fade so the capacity of the cell uh, will get paid out uh, very fastly when we are discharging at high currents or when we are discharging uh, our deep discharging is happening so the capacity will get uh, uh, decreased in the cell very fastly so these are like disadvantage of this and because of uh, discharging high currents the temperature in the cell will increase because of increment in this temperature we are mainly getting like uh, people uh, the fire issues were happening in these things okay so uh, leading to these particular cons let's say like uh, because of the high cost of cobalt and thermal stability the researchers start working on uh, better metals oxides so that we can overcome the cost and as well as like uh, the thermal stability point okay so then they come up with like a uh, different materials such as a uh, ferrous or uh, manganese okay or nickel they come up with like three different materials that is manganese ferrous and uh, nickel and they also have to look at like a uh, toxicity of uh, toxic levels so compared to cobalt these materials ferrous and manganese were having like, they are like less toxic okay so that's the reason they tested with uh, the second type of uh, battery a uh, second type of cell that is lithium manganese oxide okay. so they didn't get like expected performance of uh, lithium nickel oxide that's the reason uh, they have gone directly with the lithium manganese oxide but they have done the test for lithium nickel oxide also so in lithium manganese oxide as usual the anode remains the same which is a lithium carbide and the cathode is a lithium manganese oxide and the electrolyte remains the same so the uh, best thing over here is like it is having high cell voltage of 3.8 and uh, specific energy is like less 90 to 120 per watt hour per kg so if we are having less specific energy means we are having like less specific capacity because they are having close relation right cell cap cell energy or specific energy is the product of nominal voltage and uh, cell capacity so if you observe here we are having a nominal voltage as 3.8 which is very high value but uh, we are getting less specific energy it's because of less uh, capacity of the uh, this uh, manganese oxide okay and this particular cell is having like a very less cycle life which is uh, 300 to 700 cycle life okay and it is used like power tools as i told you before like uh, power tools in the industrial applications and medical instruments and electrical power trains also we are using these things Coming to the structure of uh, lithium manganese oxide, it is having like a spinal uh, shaped structure. So, which is uh, in the previous case, it is having like layers, right? So, for these layers, uh, if you connect another layers like this, so the, it will become like a spinal structure. If you observe here, this is one layer, and this is another layer, and this is the third layer. Okay. So, in between those layers, we are having the interconnections here. So that's how it is and if you look at over here uh, the lithium ion can go uh, i mean like it will be here it will be having like a 3d 3d movement ion. where there in the lithium cobalt we are having like a two-dimensional but here we are having like a 3d okay so coming to the pros and cons of this particular lithium manganese oxide so the main aim of uh, coming to the lithium manganese oxide is to overcome the cost of a manganese sorry cobalt so that we have achieved 
and the next one is like uh, to overcome the thermal stability that point also has been achieved in the manganese oxide so it is giving like a better safety performance compared to lithium cobalt oxide and is less less toxic compared to the cobalt okay and the thing is like as the lithium manganese oxide is having like a 3d spinal structure so there is easy movement of lithium ion okay so if there is easy movement of lithium ion in the particular uh, structure it means that there is low internal resistance in the cell so if you are having low internal resistance there will be low losses right so that's the main advantage of lithium manganese oxide because of this structure because of the spinal structure we are having low internal resistance and it's having like a fast charging and discharging capabilities it means that it can discharge high amount of current for for a given period of time or a particular interval of time okay but coming to the cons yeah it, it overcome the thermal stability but there is a problem with this like uh, at high temperatures the lifetime stability is going to decrease it's not having like hazardous problems but the stability of the cell is decreasing or the stability of the structure is decreasing so that's the main problem with this and the, as i told you like uh, we are having a uh, less specific energy it means which means that uh, the main reasons might be cell voltage and cell capacity but here we are having a high cell voltage so the reason behind this is the cell capacity the theoretical cell capacity values itself were around like 100 to 120 milliamp per gram or 120 amp per kg okay so that's the reason we are getting less specific energy and the third uh, backdrop of this is like a structural change so whenever uh, we are discharging or whenever we are charging this particular cell the spinal structure is uh, changing its structure okay so whenever it changes its structure what will happen is like uh, the internal resistance of the cell will change okay and also the stability of the cell will change so there is a main backdrop of this particular uh, cell and then it is also having the low, lower uh, cycle life okay so these are the cons of this particular lithium manganese oxide cell so then uh, like they thought of like okay uh lithium cobalt oxide is having uh, problems of thermal stability to overcome that they introduced the lithium manganese oxide and in this uh, they are having some problems with the structural stability and specific capacity then they thought like okay why well, we have to go with only one material one metal oxide so then they thought of going with like different types of combinations okay so then comes the third type of cell that is a uh, lithium nickel manganese cobalt okay so here in uh, one minute so yeah in uh, in lithium nmc anode is uh, as usual it is a uh, lithium carbide and uh, cathode is a uh, nmc where n stands for nickel m stands for manganese and uh, c stands for cobalt okay so now as we are uh, first thing is like cobalt is having some problems but it is having like a, a high specific uh, cell capacity right that's the reason we are using this part and manganese it is decreasing the internal resistance of the cell but it is having some structural uh, stability so that's the reason we implemented nickel into this particular cell okay so it is giving some uh, structural stability we'll discuss like a what happens if you add nickel what happens with the add of uh, manganese also and there are like types of cells in this particular nmc based uh, so here it is like uh, nmc 311 nmc 342 and nmc 6622 and also like uh, we are having nmc 811 like that so what exactly they represent is like these numbers uh let's say like example of uh, nmc 311 okay so it means like a uh, one third of uh, one third percentage of uh, nickel one third percentage of manganese and one third percentage of cobalt to of, out of the total or if you uh, say like a uh, 8 8111 it is like a uh, 80% nickel and 10% of uh, co uh, manganese and 10% of uh, cobalt okay so that's the reason like uh, if you observe in the calculation also it will be uh, the nickel for nickel it will return something like this 0.8 ni uh, manganese 0.1 cobalt 0.1 lithium okay it will be something like this so it represents like what percentage of uh, these materials has been added into that particular cell 
okay so each and every material added into this is having like a particular uh, reason okay so if you add like cobalt it is gives capacity if you add like manganese it gives like low internal resistance if you add like nickel it gives like stability to the cell okay so the main advantage of these things so like it's having high specific energy and high specific power and of course the same operating region but uh, for an nmc the voltage or operating voltage curve will be different uh, with respect to other curves okay i'll show you those are uh, discharge curves of all the cells then only you'll get uh, then you'll get like a visualization of these things and the main problem is like a uh, cost it is a uh, costly okay so now as we are using the nickel uh, nickel is not the toxic compared with a uh, cobalt so this particular cell is like a uh, less toxic and as we are using less amount of cobalt in this thing let's say like we are using like 0.1 percentage or uh, 10 percentage the toxic levels has been decreased so the cycle life is like it's having like a high cycle life of 1000 to 2000 uh, cycles and this application can be seen in like e bikes some medical instruments and electric power trains and industrial applications and this particular cell uh, adding the nickel is giving like a uh, high discharge rates also so that's the reason we can use them in like a uh, hybrid vehicles also hybrid electric vehicles so as there are like combination of uh, different types of uh, materials in this particular nmc based so it can serve either as an energy cell or it can serve as uh, both a power cell which means that we can use it for range application and we can use the same cell for power application okay it can serve as both and nickel adds here the specific capacity and manganese has the benefit of forming spinal structure and low internal resistance so this is the main reason of adding these two things to the cobalt and forming a new compound that is nmc and of course it is having like a high specific capacity because uh, i mean like if you are having high specific capacity will be having high specific energy and high specific power okay those are the pros of this particular cell coming to the cons uh, adding nickel leads to the stability and manganese offers low specific energy okay that we have di discussed this particular point in the previous uh, when we were discussing like lithium manganese oxide it is having like a 120 amp hour per kg the theoretical value itself that's the reason like it is having low specific energy but in overall because of a nickel and because of a cobalt we are having high cell high cell capacities okay so yeah that's about a uh, nmc so before going to other cells i'll try to take some questions over here Uh, is there a way uh, why the self discharge occurs even when not in use and not connected to any load i will discuss uh, when we are discussing regarding that particular question we are having self discharge concept uh, coming in, in the coming slides so i will discuss when we are discussing that particular thing so is there a way we can prevent self discharge yes uh, there is a way to uh, prevent the self discharge we'll discuss that also what if you use a combination of all cathodes and anodes of for a single car battery any problem with that see like in a particular car battery we are not allowed to use different types of cell chemistries because different types of cell chemistries are having like different behaviors they'll behave uh, they are having like non linear behave, behavior with respect to state of charge with respect to like uh, temperature or with respect to discharge currents and with respect to discharge voltage profile and all the things so it's very dangerous to connect like two different types of uh, two different chemistries of cells in the same battery pack and it is also if you look in the battery pack they will most probably use the cells that were manufactured in the same slot okay and the uh, the cells were having the same voltage and the cells were having like a same uh, capacity and all these things we have to mainly concentrate all those things otherwise uh, we will be facing so many uh, problems with the battery pack and it is not allowed to use or different types of cells in the same battery how do uh, companies choose the electrolyte on what basis so uh, electrolyte uh, it's again like uh, depends upon like uh, permissibility and the uh, how uh, another thing is like uh, how much it is ready to accept the flow of ions 
and also based on the like uh, mass properties it has to be like very light in weight because it's just like uh, it has to allow only the ions to flow okay so based on these three parameters and the another thing is like a uh, material availability based on all these things they'll select the uh, electrolyte and it has to have like a highest uh, ionic conductivity and less internal resistance so these are the parameters on which electrolyte will be selected so there is a question over here asking what is soc soc stands for like a state of charge so it tells like how much of uh, how much amount of uh, capacity is present at a particular point of time is it true that if you charge mobile or electric compound batteries to 100% efficiency of batteries decreases exactly if you charge or discharge to 100% your efficiency of the battery will be decreased that's true so i'll when i'm discussing the soc range i'll discuss this particular concept also uh I mean, like, if what happens if a charger, what happens if it is charged to 100 percentage? <clears throat> okay, I think these are the questions. Uh, now I'll move on. So the next one is like a lithium ferrous phosphate. So lithium ferrous phosphate is having like a, a anode of a lithium carbide. There is not much of change, and the cathode is a lithium ferrous phosphate. It is having a very normal, less nominal voltage of 3.2, and the specific energy also is having like 100 to 140 water per kg. But the main advantage of this like is having high cycle life and high stable, uh, what you call it? high safety in terms of internal safety. It is having high internal safety. So that's the reason you can uh, use them in the portable applications like our mobiles and all this stuff. And may, and it is used for energy storage applications. So what exactly mean by energy storage applications is like uh, nowadays uh, all the I mean like uh, all the nations are back of uh, sustainability. So uh, to be in the top of uh, sustainability, the main aim is to use renewable energy sources like uh, solar energy or wind energy or hydropower energy. So using this type of energy. So now we are getting like more amount of energy from the solar and wind. So we have to store this particular amount of energy. So where we can store them. So for that, they are using the, again the batteries. So in that particular thing, this uh, lithium ferrous phosphate is best suitable for that particular application, energy storage application. So whatever the energy that is generated from the uh, renewable, renewable sources that can be stored in these cells, okay? So if you look at over here, this is again having like a 1D. So uh, as it is having like 1D, there is a restriction in the flow. So as there is a restriction, we'll be having some internal resistance in the cell. So as there is internal resistance, there will be some losses present in the cell. Okay. So as I told you, uh, it is having a high internal safety, high cycle life good uh, good electrochemical performance uh, with uh, sorry i think uh, it is having good electronic performance but not low internal resistance i think it got replaced over here it's having good electrochemical performance but not the low internal resistance and it's having like flat discharge voltage discharge curve what is flat voltage discharge, discharge curve is like a for different technologies, uh, different uh, voltage profiles will be there. If you took, look into the latest technology, it will approximately it will be having something like this. But whereas for lithium ion, it will be something follows like this. Okay. And for some of the lithium ion technology, it is something like this. So here for lithium ferrous phosphate, it is having almost the flat discharge curve. So there are advantages and disadvantages of having both the flat discharge curve. So advantage is like uh, we can operate the cell at particular at that particular voltage for a longer period of time, okay. But the disadvantage is like estimation of uh, I mean like estimation of a uh, state of charge or estimation of uh, capacity in the cell. It will become uh, really difficult because uh, there are like different methodologies that will be going to estimate the state of charge that is like uh, one is a voltage based and another one is like current indication based. When we're using the voltage base, we have to differentiate the voltage. But as it is being the con uh, flat curve, 
the differentiation will remains like a, there's not much of change right so the differentiation will come zero so there's a reason it is very difficult to estimate using this particular uh, flat curves so there's a one disadvantage of that so coming to the cons uh, yeah it is having low uh, cell voltage and low energy density so as i uh, as i told you if you are having a low cell voltage or low cell capacity of course it leads like low specific energy because it is a product of a specific uh, capacity and uh, voltage so there is the reason we are having a low energy density because of that or because of low cell voltage we are getting low energy density and it's having like a thermal stability and low capacity problems okay so here we are having low capacity and uh, low cell voltage which leads low specific energy so that's about uh, lithium ferrous phosphate so the next one uh, nickel cobalt uh, aluminum it is also the same thing which is uh, which is very similar to the nmc there is not much of change in this okay uh, main aim is to like uh, increase the performance by combining different uh, elements okay so here uh, we are using nickel cobalt instead of uh, manganese we are using aluminum so what's happening is like uh, adding aluminum is giving like a uh, greater stability to the structure or to the like a uh, cell okay and of course we have seen that uh, adding uh, nickel is giving like a more specific energy okay and one more thing is like this particular cell is having like high specific power but the disadvantage of this particular cell is like uh, it's having very less uh, cycle life is around like 500 and again i'm telling you like uh, it depends upon the up, uh, application and depends upon the cell also okay cell capacity and all these things the cycle life will depends and for which application you are using this for if you use for like mobile it will be having separate cycle life and if you're using it for like industrial applications it will be having like a different uh, cycle life okay so it varies from application to application the cycle lives and as i told you uh here it is having high specific energy if you are having high specific energy we can get like a good range in kilometers so there's the reason nc is having like a more range and if you observe Tesla cars, they are using LCA and NMC based cells. The only the pro, uh, cons of this particular cell is like uh, safety and cost. They are uh, costly and uh, they are less uh, safety. Okay. So for this safety to overcome the safety problems, uh, we are using like a BMS battery management system to overcome like a voltage problems, or current problems, or thermal problems. Okay we are using like external safety circuits whereas for lfp or lco we are having like internal uh, safety parameters like uh, ptc cid and all these things but for these things uh, for sure we need like for those things also we need bms but yeah for this uh, as there are like as there were no internal safety measurements so we have to for sure we have to provide the bms uh, safety thing so the final one uh, it's not based on the cathode type it's based on the anode type okay so up to now we have discussed like uh, based on the uh, cathode types but now what we are going to discuss is like uh, based on the anode types so one is based on uh, lithium titanate oxide so up to now what is anode used is like uh, lithium carbide okay or graphite but now in this uh, we are using lithium titanate oxide and cathodes were like uh, here there are like two types of cathodes one is like lithium manganese oxide type and uh, nickel nickel manganese cobalt type okay so if you observe here the nominal voltage is coming around like 2.4 volts okay which is approximately equivalent to like lead acid lead acid is having like 2.1 it is having like 2.4 voltage that's the ba biggest backdrop of lithium titanate oxide cell it's having less voltage compared to other lithium ion technologies okay specific energy it is having like 200 to 260 watt hour per kg and cycle life yeah, it is having less cycle life and it is used in like uh, ultra vehicle applications and uh, a ups uh, uh, which are called as uh, inverters and all these things okay so one uh, one thing this is uh, lithium titanate can be used is like uh, can be falsely charged and can be falsely discharged and is having like high charge rates and discharge rates okay so for a particular period of time we can discharge this particular cell at like 10 c rates or 20 c rates something like that okay i will discuss what exactly is c rate also 
okay and uh, coming to the cycle life sorry uh, i think the slides got displaced this is a uh, not 500 this is a 3000 to 7000 cycle life okay it is having like high cycle life sorry for that mistake and uh, and another uh, pro is like a good low temperature rate characteristics uh, if you take like a, when the temperature is low there will be some problem with the discharge of the cell okay so we have to make sure that the cell is operating in this particular operating region or at least we have to make sure that the cell is operating at the room temperature okay otherwise there will be losses or your discharge currents will not be that perfect okay but this particular lithium titan oxide cell is giving like a a uh, good low temperature uh, characteristics rate characteristics rate characteristics in the sense like charge and discharge characteristics okay so the, as i told you the main uh, backdrop of this is like a cell voltage if you can achieve like a max cell voltage out of this let's say like if you can get it like 3.6 and this uh, energy density more then uh, this can dominate other uh, lithium ion technologies but because of backdrop of this uh, nominal voltage and specific energy so it's still uh, not that great in the performance and uh, range applications. So yeah, now we'll give a like overall comparison over here uh, based on cathodes and uh, anodes. So the first one, lithium cobalt oxide. So if you look at over here, uh, this is the cell which is having high specific energy density because this lithium cobalt oxide is having like high specific capacity okay and in terms of like energy density in terms of uh, volumetric energy density it is high and voltage it is 3.65 okay so there is a cell lithium magnesium oxide which is having 3.8 but yeah 3.65 is also good normal cell voltage okay coming to the relative cycle life it is having relative cycle less relative i mean like less cycle life next one is uh, nickel cobalt manganese it is having less energy density compared with this and uh, energy density less voltage is more compared to lithium cobalt oxide and nca okay so li lithium cobalt oxide is standing uh, in the top in terms of energy densities and lmo is standing uh, in the last in the terms of energy densities but in terms of voltage lmo is standing in the top and uh, lithium ferrous phosphate is in the least okay so these are small comparisons, but yeah, all the lithium uh, technologies can be employed in like ultra vehicle applications. So the best thing, I mean, like uh, according to the recent statistics and re recent studies, uh, if you take the example of uh, like Germany, uh, it is a industrial uh, automotive hub. So in uh, Germany, all the electric vehicles produced, they are using like 80% uh, of electric vehicles for using NMC or NCA based uh, cell chemistries. Okay. So that's where like electric vehicle is standing at present. So whatever the cell you want to select for your application. So first decide you have to decide your application and then you have to decide your uh, cell. If you're using it for like portable applications, cell or mobiles, then you can go with like a lithium ferrous phosphate or lithium cobalt oxide. If you're going for traction applications, then you have to go with a NMC or NCA based like this. Cells. Okay. So what I want to tell you here is like, a, it depends upon your application, the cell selection, all the stuff. So these are called as like a voltage performance curves, uh, which are uh, potential versus capacity. So if you remember, I have told you like a lithium ferrous phosphate is having like a flat discharge curve. If you look at over here, it is having like a very flat discharge curve and uh, this is a lithium uh, nmc based cell so it is just having it is decreasing like this so if you observe it is coming from like a 4.6 to 4.2 it means that it is having like more operating region and it is good that it's not having like a flat discharge curve if it is having flat discharge curve as i told you it is having both advantages and disadvantages but for coming to this particular thing what is the advantage like uh, we can operate the cell at high voltage levels and yeah uh, the similarly the nca also so this is the nca the violet color is the nca it is also having the similar behavior of as of nmc 
this is because of uh, three different materials that are present in the cell and the remaining cells were not having like a, that much behavior they are having like a, a flat behaviors okay so yeah this is all about uh, lithium ion cell technology so if you have any doubts in this particular lithium ion cell technology uh, we will take the doubts otherwise uh, we'll move on with uh, the next one that is a parameter study parameter study in the sense like uh, up to now there are like many new terms has been come like a uh, state of charge capacity and all these things we'll discuss regarding those things any doubts in this particular concept of lithium ion cell technology Okay, if there were no doubts, uh, we'll take like a small two minute break and then again we'll start. Meanwhile, if anyone is having the doubts, they can keep it on, uh, post it on the chat box. Uh, there is a question over here that uh, is there any other tech for uh, storage of power other than batteries like ultra capacitors and flywheels yes there are technologies available still i mean like uh, as you said uh, ultra capacitors are uh, nowadays uh, everyone is working on like uh, hydrogen fuel cells so yeah in, in the future like uh, in lithium ion cell itself like uh, will be coming with a uh, lithium sulfur or lithium ion batteries so yeah we are coming up with many options again the flywheel is like uh, it's a mechanical thing i don't think so we'll be implementing that for the energy storage so maybe we'll be going with like uh, most probably with the batteries or otherwise like a uh, fuel cell uh, batteries and the capacitors ultra capacitors and all this stuff okay cool then we'll start with the uh, third part of the session that is a parameter study so the main aim of this parameter study is like up to now uh, in the last week and this week we have seen like many new terms okay so uh, i just want to give a clarity on all these uh, terms terminology what exactly they mean and uh, how they have to be uh, used and where they have to be used and all the stuff okay so here we'll be mainly discussing about cell voltage cell capacity energy density power density self discharge cycle life state of charge depth of discharge and charge rates okay so starting with the cell voltage if you look into like our data sheets 
so in the data sheets they will be having like a three types of voltage one is a nominal voltage nominal cell voltage and there will be like over voltage or peak voltage and there will be like a third voltage that is called as under voltage or end of life voltage okay so that will be represented in the uh, data sheets whenever you refer the data sheets you will get to know that okay so what exactly they mean by these things is so for lithium ion cell technology uh, the peak voltage available is like a 4.2 for some of the technologies and uh, more than that also is available okay so let's consider the peak voltage for lithium ion is 4.2 okay so that 4.2 is called as the over voltage okay so that is called as a over voltage and uh, there will be a like a voltage limit where we can't discharge the cell below that okay what will happen if we discharge below that voltage level is we can't regain back the uh, voltage which means that uh, i mean like uh, we can't recharge back that particular cell okay so the cell loses its capacity also so that's why they name it as like a end of life of that particular battery or under voltage limit of the particular battery so for this particular lithium ion cell technology it will come around like a 2.7 or 2.8 again it depends upon like uh, different technologies okay so that's called as under voltage limit or under voltage okay so these are like two different technologies over voltage and under voltage limits so we have to make sure that the cell is operating between over voltage and under voltage limit so that's why we will be using the bms in bms which is called as a battery management system we will be having an option called uh, over voltage protection and, and under voltage protection so whenever the voltage when we are discharging the cell whenever the voltage goes below like 2.7 the discharge circuit will get switched off which means that the discharge will be stopped <clears throat> sorry and similarly when we are charging the cell whenever the cell voltage reaches the over voltage limit of 4.2 volts then the charging circuit will get uh, switched off okay so that's the main working principle of that bms it will take care of this voltage protection and the third important terminology that is a nominal voltage okay so what exactly this nominal voltage tells is so let's say like uh, you are having a cell let's say like you are having a 3.6 voltage uh, nominal voltage cell and it is having a capacity of uh, 2000 mah okay so now we are discharging this particular cell at 0.2 c rate okay so we are discharging at 0.2 c rate what does exactly 0.2 c rate means anyhow i'll discuss regarding the c rate but yeah before that it will be good to discuss over here also so 1c corresponds to 2000 mah okay point two c corresponds to how much so it will become point two into two thousand <coughs> sorry it is four hundred mh which means that it is zero point zero four amp hour and this is point two amp hour okay so this is the available uh, capacity of the cell but we are discharging the cell at of uh, 0.04 amp hour or 0.2 c rate the amount of voltage that is available when soc when state of charge is 50 percentage when state of charge is 50 percentage at that point the voltage available is called as nominal voltage okay similarly the amount of capacity that is present in the cell at 50% SOC, when we are discharging the cell at 0.2 C rate, that capacity is called as nominal cell capacity. Okay, so this is the nominal cell voltage and this is the nominal cell capacity. So if you observe here, the blue uh, is for the charging curve for uh, nickel manganese cobalt. And this particular uh, axis represents the 50% SOC. On X axis, we are having a state of charge. And on Y axis, uh, we are having like a cell terminal voltage. So at 50% and this is like a 
point to see uh, charging curve so the amount of voltage available at this point is like 3.7 approximately okay so that is the nominal voltage of nmc base cell and similarly for lithium ferrous phosphate at 50 percent soc it is having like approximately 3.3 as the nominal voltage okay so that's the exact meaning of our nominal voltage the amount of voltage that is available inside the cell when we're discharging a cell at 0.2 c rate and if you look at it 50 percent soc and also the cell capacity okay and the cell capacity as i told you before the cell capacity depends upon uh the amount of energy that is present inside the cell or the amount of active material that goes inside the cell because if you remember the formula c equal to zf by m so one thing is like number of electrons that are participating in the chemical reaction and m is molar mass so here the molar mass mainly uh, determines the cell capacity okay so one thing here uh, we have to bring the trade off point is like uh, increasing the molar mass will decrease your uh, cell capacity but what i am telling is increase the amount of active material that goes into the cell which means by decreasing the unwanted material increase the amount of uh, active material then it will increase your cell capacity okay so for a given amount of uh, uh, what you call area or for given amount of uh, volume we have to make sure that we have to, we can keep more amount of active material inside the cell so then it will increase your cell capacity okay so in order to understand this uh, uh, very clearly we'll do like a small small calculations so let's say like uh, our cell voltage is like 3.6 voltage so i am representing cell voltage as v cell is a 3.6 and cell capacity c cell capacity is a 2100 mah okay so for this uh, what we are going to do is like we are going to calculate the energy so energy equal to v cell into i c cell which is 3.6 into 2.1 2.1 amp amp power or 2100 mah so it will become like a uh, 7.56 watt hour right so now what i am doing is i am adding another 10 cells in series I am connecting 10 cells in series. So, what exactly happens when the cells are connected in series? When the cells are connected in series, the voltage of the cell will be increased. Okay. So now voltage of the then it will be called as pack or module. So V pack equal to V cell into number of cells that are connected in series, that is 10. So 3.6 into 10, it is 36 volts. But the cell cell remains the constant, it won't change. It is 2.1 amp hour. So now the energy will become V cell into C cell, that is a 36 into 2.1. So it is nothing but 75.6 whatever. Okay. And the third case, now what I'm doing is I'm keeping only one cell in series, but 10 cells in parallel. Okay, so what will happen when the, the then V cell will be the same? It is a 3.6, but C pack will be C cell into number of cells that are connected in parallel, that is 10. So it is 2.1 into 10, that is 21 amp hour. So now energy equal to 3.6 into 21, which is giving again 75.6 watt hour. Okay. So what I want to bring is here is like a the voltage remains constant in the parallel circuit and the voltage will vary in the series circuit and similarly the current remains constant in the series circuit and it will vary in the parallel circuit but the overall energy will remain the same if you can have like i mean like the same number of cells of the similar specifications okay so that's about the cell capacity and cell voltage moving on uh, next one is like uh, energy energy density and uh, power density 
so energy density as i told you before like uh, there are two terms in that particular thing specific energy density uh what do you call it? sorry energy density can be classified into two things uh, based on mass and based on like a uh, volume so based on mass it is called as a gravimetric energy density and based on volume it is volumetric density volumetric energy density so what exactly this is telling is the amount of energy that the cell can store or the cell can give you for give per like a unit mass or per unit volume so that is like uh, energy in the sense like a uh, cell voltage into cell capacity which is nothing but watt hour per kg and here it will be watt hour per liter okay so that's about the energy densities and i forgot to tell you here here like cell capacity so it is i mean like the cell capacity of battery is the amount of electric charge that can be stored or released by the cell okay we know charge uh, in the first uh, part we have calculated the charge present in like uh, one mole of electrons so from there only we got like faraday's constant of 96500 coulombs okay so the unit of capacity is amp hour and the unit of voltage is uh, volts okay so here the unit of energy density is watt hour per kg or watt hour per liter and the next one that is a uh, so when we told when we we are talking only about energy not energy density okay so then the unit of this will be joule or it can be like a watt second or watt hour okay so that represents the energy but the power power is like a, the amount of energy that is uh, present at a particular point of time it is power is denoted in terms of watts or it can be joule per second okay so this can be represented as joule per second or uh, watts so what many people will think like the amount of energy that can be drawn at particular point of time so like that they will be thinking but the exact meaning of power is like a uh, it's a measure of internal resistance so what exactly if you are measuring the power in sense like we are measuring the internal resistance because let's say like uh, we are having circuit so this is your battery so this is the terminals so here we are having like a uh, open circuit voltage of uh, 3.6 and uh, cell capacity of uh, 2 amp power so the power here is like a uh, 3.6 into 2 that is 7.2 watts okay sorry it is watt so but there is a resistor over here it is a 1 ohm resistor and let's assume that here uh, voltage current is passing like 2 amp of current is passing so because of this 2 uh, amps of current passing there will be some voltage drop across here so v equal to ir okay so it will be 2 volts 2 voltage of drop so because of this voltage drop there will be some power loss that is nothing but i square r i is here is a 2 into r is 1 sorry it is 4 into 1 so 4 watts has been lost so actually it has to be 7.2 watts here but the output we are getting is 4 watts okay so that is the exact meaning the power of the device is a measure of its internal resistance okay so a system with small internal resistance can provide lots of energy in a very short period of a time for a given amount of time okay so that is the main definition of this uh, particular uh, power yeah i mean like generally we will be telling like uh, it is joule per uh, unit of time sorry it is just a uh, joule per second or watt the energy available per unit of time but real meaning is like a measure of its internal uh, resistance okay so we'll try to do some calculation on this also for energy we have already calculated the uh, what you call the uh, in the previous uh, examples we calculated like how to do the energy here uh, we'll try to do like specific energy 
and uh, specific uh, energy in terms of volume in terms of mass okay so here what i'm doing is like i'm doing for 18650 cell okay 18650 lithium ion cell i am taking and the mass of this particular cell is uh, 50 grams okay capacity of the cell is like uh, 3250 mah and the cell voltage nominal cell voltage for lithium technology is 3.6 voltage so for this now what i'm going to calculate is gravimetric energy density and volumetric energy density okay so how to calculate the gravimetric energy density it is unit is watt hour per kg and this is watt hour per liter okay so first we have to calculate the energy and then we have to divide with mass so energy equal to cell voltage into cell capacity that is 3.6 into 3.250 so it is coming around like 11.7 whatever so now gravimetric energy density let it be ged equal to e by m so it is 11.7 divided by 50 grams converting into kgs it will become like a 50 divided by 1000 0.05 kgs so it is equivalent to 234 watt hour per kg okay so that is a gravimetric energy density and similarly if you do the volumetric energy density first we have to calculate the volume of this 18650 lithium ion cell so if you remember in the first session 18650 18 represents the diameter and 65 represents the height of the cell okay so for a cylindrical cell the volume is calculated as pi r square h okay so here we know the diameter and we know the height so it can be pi by 4 d square into h okay so the value is coming around like uh, d is 18 square and h is uh, 65 so the value of uh, volume is pi by 4 of 18 whole square in, into 60 into 65 so if you do this calculation you will get somewhere around like a 16.54 centimeter cube so whatever the mm is there convert that to the centimeter cube okay so now volumetric energy density ved equal to whatever the energy we calculated divided by volume so it is 11.7 divided by 16.5 centimeter cube if you can convert into the meter cube then it will be in liters right so we can do that also so divide by 16.54 it will give you approximately 0 0.7073 watt hour per lead watt hour per centimeter cube okay that is nothing but 707 watt hour per liter so this is how we have to calculate the gravimetric energy densities and uh, volumetric energy densities if you know the shape of the cell and if you know the dimensions of the cell we can calculate the volume and we can calculate the volumetric energy density and if you know like mass of the particular cell we can calculate the volumetric energy density okay i hope you understand this calculation moving on next concept is like a state of charge so what exactly the state of charge represents is like uh, the amount of energy that is present in a cell at a particular point of time let's take the example of your mobile okay so what we'll do is like uh, before sleeping we'll keep our mobile for charge so before keeping it to charge it will show you like a 10 percent or something like that okay so the 10 percent is called as state of charge which means that the amount of energy that is available at that particular point of time is 10 percentage okay after two hours of uh, charging you will observe that it has been charged to like 90 percentage okay which means that the amount of energy available after two hours of time is 90 percentage okay so this state of charge is in terms of percentages and this can be measured using two methodologies uh, methodologies one is voltage based methods 
and another one is like uh, coulomb counting based methods okay so at present uh, as i told you lithium ion cell technology is having like a flat discharge curves so it's very difficult to estimate the state of charge using the flat curves that's the reason we are going with the current integration method so in current integration method the formula that we will be using is soc equal to at time t equal to soc at time t minus 1 plus or minus integration of i dt divided by c into 3600 so here at time t we are going to measure and t minus 1 the previous one plus or minus so here i represents for discharge case and plus represents for charge case and i is the current that we are discharging or charging c represents the cell capacity okay so that's how we will be calculating the state of charge but yeah let's take a small example of state of charge calculation by using the coulomb counting okay so let's say like your cell capacity is 10 amp hour or let's say like 12 amp hour and now we are charging this particular cell with the input current of input current is 2 amps not amp hour it is just 2 amps and we are charging this uh, cell for a period of charge time equal to Two hours. Okay, so the input current that we are giving is two amps, and the charge time is two hours. So the total amount of current that we can input into the cell is so that is nothing but capacity that we can uh, input into the cell is nothing but current capacity or charge equal to if you remember Q equal to I T right charge. So it is nothing but two into two hours. It is nothing but four amp hour. okay so after 2 hours of time the amount of charge that we input into the cell is 4 amp hour so here 12 amp hour represents 100% state of charge then 4 amp hour represents how much of state of charge so 4 into 100 divided by 12 so approximately 33.33 percentage which means that if you charge your cell with the input current of 2 amps for 2 hours the amount of uh, st the state of charge will be 33.33 percentage okay so that's how uh, it is just simplified calculation of soc okay and let's say like uh, now we are doing the discharge calculation okay now we have done charge right the same cell 12 amp hour now it is at 100 percentage we have discharged this particular cell at the rate of 3 amps current for let's say like 3 uh, hours okay so the total amount of charge that has been discharged from this particular cell is q equal to i into t that is 3 into 3 9 amp hour okay so 12 amp corresponds to like uh, 100 100% soc 9 amp hour corresponds to how much sorry 9 amp hour has been discharged so the amount of charge that will be left inside the cell will be 12 minus 9 that is 3 amp hour right so 3 3 amp hour corresponds to how much 3 into 100 by 12 okay so it will be 25% which means that 75 percentage of energy has been discharged and we are left out with 25 percentage of energy okay so that's the exact meaning of state of charge okay so then what about discharge De sorry what about depth of discharge okay so it's nothing but depth of discharge equal to 1 minus soc which means that how much of energy that has been discharged here 75% has been discharged that is nothing but dod depth of discharge and soc will be 25 okay 1 minus 25 will give you depth of discharge i hope you got a clear idea about uh, this one state of charge and depth of discharge and as i told you like uh, so this is how the voltage graphs will be there for uh, uh, lithium ion cell technology so if you observe these particular points up to this it is having a like a flat profile but in this region we are having exponential region and here we are decreasing region so in this particular region 
the non homogeneous chemical reaction takes place and there will be like internal resistance losses as well as the ohmic losses polarization losses and everything will be there okay so here on the y axis is it is a terminal voltage and on the x axis it is soc so it is 0 to 20 percentage sorry it is 100 80 and this is 20 and this is 0 okay initially we are at 100 percentage 4.2 voltage and this is a 2.7 voltage okay so that's the reason like as we are having exponential graph over here which is telling that here the non homogeneous chemical reaction takes place which means that we are not it is not good to operate the cell in that particular region so that's the reason we should not discharge the cell uh, fully to zero percentage or we should not charge the cell fully to 100 percentage so there will be operating region which is called as between 80 to 20 percentage or at least 95 percentage to 10 percentage you have to keep in the range so that your life cycle of the battery will be increased so yeah moving on coulomb efficiency a coulomb efficiency what it tells is like uh, the amount of uh, uh, for charge and discharge efficiency we'll be losing some amount of energy for each and every charge and discharge cycle so for different technologies we are having like a uh, different uh, charge efficiencies so lithium and technology is having like a uh, zero like lithium based we are having like almost 90 percent efficiency but whereas uh, for these things nickel metal hydron they are like below uh, in the range of uh, 50 to 60 percentage or 50 to 60 70 percentages okay so we have to select a cell that is having like a high good charge and discharge efficiencies okay here it is named as a coulombic efficiency so this coulombic efficiency can be divided into like two types one is a charge efficiency and a discharge efficiency okay so again there are like uh, formulas for this uh, but yeah it will be like a somewhat uh, uh, what you call uh, maybe uh, at this point of time it will be difficult to understand this because there will be integrations involved in this particular thing because we have to take the OCV current profiles, I mean, like open circuit voltage current profiles, and we have to do all those calculations. So, I'm not going in depth about those things. But yeah, to give you a like clear idea on that, I just mentioned that is polemic efficiency. The next one is like uh, self discharge. Okay. So, what exactly mean by the self discharge is it is a measure of how quickly a cell will lose its energy while sitting on the shelf okay so why this uh, cell is losing the energy because there will be some unwanted chemical reactions or actions takes place within the cell okay because of this unwanted chemical reactions the cell will get discharged why this unwanted chemical reaction takes place okay it depends upon the like, uh, internal cell parameters such as uh, electrolytes we are using or uh, separators we are using and all the stuff apart from that the main important thing is the temperature it depends upon the storage temperature at which temperature you are placing that thing okay that plays a very important role in self-discharge so how we can measure this self-discharge so if we uh, there is a methodology that is called as a capacity retention methodology or a charging retention capability okay it is generally denoted like that capacity retention capability or uh, charging retention capability so it is the ratio of so i'll write it over here charging retention capability equal to ratio of capacity of battery after self discharge c after discharge after self discharge this is self discharge by capacity before self discharge okay so this gives the charge charging retention capability values so the faster is the self discharge the worse the charging retention capability which means that it can't retain the i mean like it's very uh, difficult to store the energy in that particular thing okay so that's about the charge retention capability if you look at over here the graph represents the self discharge characteristics this is the 20 degree celsius at 40 degree celsius and at 60 degree celsius okay 
so let's say the cell capacity we are assuming is like 10 amp or cell or let's say like it is 16 amp or cell 100 percent correspond to 16 amp or okay so now when the cell is operating at when the cell is stored at 20 degrees celsius initially when the time is zero it is at 100 percentage but after like uh, 12 weeks after storing the cell for 12 weeks of time without using that particular cell at 20 degrees celsius the charge retention capability has been decreased to approximately let's say like 90 percentage okay so here 100 percent means uh, 16 amp hour 90 percentage means how much so 90 into 16 divided by 100 it is like 14.4 amp hour so this is the amount of capacity that is available after 12 weeks of time which means that like almost uh, 2.6 or 1.6 percent 1.6 amp hour of energy has been gone as waste okay and similarly if you take a 40 degree celsius the capacity has been decreased to 40 degree, uh, 80 percentage so how much 80 percent corresponds to 80 into 16 by 100 is like uh, 16 into 0.8 so available capacity is 12.8 so the last is 3.3.2 amp hour which means almost it has been doubled it is 1.6 and now it has been doubled to 3.8 but when storing at 60 degrees celsius it almost came to 60 percentage so 60 percent is like uh, 16 into 0.6 so it came to like 9.6 which means that almost 6.4 percent amp hour has been gone as waste which is four times the uh, this value 20 degrees Celsius value so this mainly depends upon the temperature so what you have to do is like you have to make sure the cell is stored at 20 room temperature or it has to be stored away from the heat sources so that's about the self discharge next one is c rates so in the C rates, again, there are like two types. One is a uh, discharge C rates. Charge C rates. Okay. So for this best example, I'll give is like, uh, take a water bottle, take two water bottles. So this water bottle is having like a diameter of D. And this water bottle is having the diameter of 2D except that the volume and everything is same okay so now what we are doing is like we are trying to fill this water bottle okay so the amount of time that will take let's it takes time t okay so when you are filling this particular uh, bottle the time it will take is t by 2 because it is having higher diameter and we can keep like more amount of uh, water into this particular uh, water bottle and similarly this is during the filling it but when we are discharging it, the amount of time it will take to discharge water from a diameter D hole is time T. And when we are discharging the water from this, the time it will take is T by two, okay? So what it is telling is like, if you are having like a high diameter, we can uh, charge it in less time and, sorry, we can fill it in uh, less time and we can empty it in less time. Similarly, if you apply the same concept to the cells, if a cell is having like a high, uh, high C rates, which means that it can be discharged within the less time and it can be charged within the less time. Okay. And it is also, uh, I mean, like it's always not preferred to charge or discharge at high rates. Okay. They will mention you continuous charge rate and peak charge rates. Okay. So we have to go according to the specifications. So let's say, uh, so that, I mean, like, uh, here you can see, right? There are many disadvantages about this discharge characteristics also. Like if you discharge at high current, high capacities or high C rates, the amount of current you are uh, discharging will be more and your uh, I square error losses will be more. Because of that, the temperature increment also will be more. So for that, you can just see an example over here. So the red indicates the one C rate and the green indicates the 25 amps, which is approximately like a 10, 10 C rate, okay? So when we are operating the cell at 1C rate, we are getting like a 30 degree Celsius. But when we are operating the cell at 10C, we are getting 110 degree Celsius. 
okay so because of operating this 110 degree celsius your life of the cell will be decreased okay so it's not uh, advised to operate the cell at high c rates continuously okay so these high c rates or peak c rates are mentioned for a particular second of time or particular millisecond of time not for continuous time so that's about the c rates i hope you got a clear idea on the terminology and uh, uh, this what all we discussed if you have any doubts you can keep it in the chat box you can discuss regarding those questions okay if there were no questions uh, the final topic which is a uh, ether battery pack calculation it will take like just like 10 minutes okay so uh, with this i uh, will end up with the session so what is the main aim of this ether battery pack calculation was the a back capacity is like a 2.4 kilowatt hour and pack voltage is 51.5 voltage so in order to get this pack capacity and pack voltage which cell we have to select the best cell okay so after selecting the cell how many number of cells has to be connected in series how many cells has to be connected in parallel and total number of cells so these kind of calculations will be doing if you look at over here here we are taking the cell which is the icr 18650 and 26f so here icr represents i stands for like a lithium ion based c stands for cobalt and r stands for round which is nothing but cylindrical and 18650 18 is diameter 60, 65 is like height of the cell and 26 represents it is 2600 mah okay so this is a cell we are going to use and this particular cell is having like a nominal capacity which is a 2600 mah and a nominal voltage of 3.7 voltage so if you know these two values we can calculate a cells in series and cells in parallel okay so we'll start with the calculation part so first one we know the pack voltage and we know the cell voltage it is a 3.6 volt and c cell is 2.6 amp hour okay so first thing we have to calculate is number of cells connected in series that is pack voltage divided by cell voltage so here the pack voltage is a 51.5 volts divided by cell voltage is like a 2.6 sorry 3.6 so 51.5 divided by 3.6 will give you 14.3 cells so let's consider it as 14 cells and similarly n parallel number of cells connected in parallel so this is nothing but pack capacity divided by cell capacity so but here we don't know the pack capacity so how to calculate the pack capacity so if you know pack energy and uh, pack voltage then we can calculate the pack capacity so power equal to voltage into current or energy equal to voltage into current so here uh, what i mean pack capacity is nothing but here energy so energy equal to 2.4 kilowatt hour that equal to 51.5 into current which is nothing but it will be in amp hours the current or uh, the capacity so 2.4 divided by 51.5 will give you like a 0.046 into 1000 it is giving 46.6 sorry no 2.4 into 1000 divided by 51.5 it is giving 46.6 yeah 46.6 amp hour so there is a capacity in terms of amp hour so now we know the pack capacity and cell capacity so now we can get the total number of cells connected in series parallel so 46.6 divided by 2.6 so it is 46.6 divided by 
it is approximately 17.9 cells so let's count it as 18 cells okay so now n total equal to product of n series and n parallel it will give you the total number of cells that are used in the battery pack so it will be 18 into 14 so it is 252 cells okay so now we have to use 252 cells in order to get 2.4 kilowatt of uh, energy pack energy and in order to get like a 51.5 volts okay so now v cell is a 3.6 and a c cell is like a 2.6 c pack equal to 46.6 and v pack equal to voltage pack equal to 51.5 volts and e equal to e pack equal to 2.4 kilowatt hour and similarly e cell equal to 3.6 into 2.6 that is 9.36 watt hour okay so this is how we have to do the calculation in order to get like number of cells that are connected in series and number of cells that are connected in parallel next thing is like uh, in order to calculate uh, cell density energy densities as as i told you before uh, gravimetric energy density equal to e cell divided by mass cell mass so if you look at over here for this particular uh, sorry yeah for this particular cell the cell mass is 47 grams okay So here the cell mass is 47 grams. So 9.36 divided by 47 or 0 0.047 will give you like approximately 199.1 watt hour per kg. That is gravimetric energy density. That is for single cell. If you want to do it for battery pack, then we have to gross, I mean, gravimetric energy density for pack equal to e pack divided by battery mass of the pack m pack i mean like total mass of the uh, battery pack so here m pack will be total number of cells into cell mass so m pack equal to n total into cell mass that equal to so here we are having 252 cells into uh, 0 0.047 grams so this will give you 252 into 0 0.047 11.84 kgs okay so if you represent the same over here 2.4 into 1000 i am converting it to the whatever divided by 11.84 so 24 100 divided by 11.84 it is giving the same of 202.7 watt hour per kg it means that uh, this is the energy that the gravimetric energy, gravimetric energy density that the whole battery pack is having okay and if you observe here i have done the battery pack mass calculation so it is nothing but cell mass into total number of cells that were used and similarly, if you want to calculate like a volumetric energy density, first we have to calculate the volume. So volume equal to pi by 4 d square h. So for this, uh, if you remember, we have already calculated for uh, 18650 cell, the volume, because here we are using the ICR 18650 26FSL. So for that, the volume is pi by 4. D is a 18 mm whole square and H is 65. So this will be 16.54 centimeter cube after converting it to the mm to the centimeter cube, we are getting this. So now volumetric energy density, we can do it for the cell 
and we can do it for the whole ba uh, whole like a uh, what you call whole battery pack okay so again doing it for the whole battery pack it depends upon like how the cell arrangements were there okay so here we are having like a if you observe 14 cells were in series and 18 cells were in parallel Fourteen cells. It will be something like this: first cell, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and eighteen will be like this. Okay. So this will be how uh, it will be looking like. So based on this, uh, what we can do is like we can calculate the volume, how much volume it is taking, or we can take like uh, the dimensions. Eighteen is the diameter, right? So here we are having like. Uh, 18 as the 18 into 18. First, we have to calculate the dimensions. So here, as we are having 18 cells in parallel, so it will be 18 into 18 will give you the width. And similarly, you as we are having here 14 cells, so 14 into 18 will give you the length and height of the cell. Okay, height of the cell will be 65 mm. This will be 65, right? Okay, so now we know length. Length is uh, 14 into 18. Width is 18 into 18. And height is 65 mm. Okay, so now we, volume is nothing but length into width into height. So now we'll get the volume of the whole battery pack. So once if we get the volume of whole battery pack, then we can uh, divide the energy, whatever uh, 2.4 kilowatt hour divided by the volume will give the volumetric energy density of the battery pack. Otherwise, if you divide like for the cell, it will give like volumetric energy density of the cell. Okay, so that we'll understand over here. VED for cell equal to whatever the values we are getting here, uh, 9.36 divided by 16.54 it is a 0.565 watt hour per centimeter cube or it is 565 watt hour per liter that is for the single cell if you look at for uh, volumetric energy density for the pack it is 9.36 divided by length into width into height okay so first we calculate the length over here width and height over here 14 into 18 it is 252 and 18 into 18 324 and this is 65 okay so 324 into 252 into 65 will give you like a 5 that so the total volume we are getting v pack equal to volume this is equal to 5307120 mm cube okay so if you convert mm cube to the meter cube or centimeter cube it will be 1 mm equal, 1 centimeter equal to 10 mm so 10 for minus 3 so it will become 5307.120 centimeter cube and one meter equal to uh, 100 centimeters so it will become like 10 for minus 6 so it will become like 0 0.005307 meter cube okay so now if you divide these two values 9.36 divided by 5307.120 sorry here it has to be not 9.36 it has to be 2.4 kilowatt hour which means the 2400 whatever we are doing for the pack, pack right? So it will be 2400. 2400 divided by 5307.120, which is giving approximately like a 452 watt hour per liter. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is how we have to calculate the volumetric volume of the battery pack and uh, 
this is like just an uh, i mean like there are still volume calculations will be there like there are uh, there will be like uh, channels in between these things i am neglecting all those things this is just like a volume of the cells total cells okay so this for ether calculation now you might understand like uh, in order to get 2.4 kilowatt of battery pack how many number of cells required and what is the battery pack mass we are getting and what is the volume it is occupying in the vehicle okay so these are all the calculations which you have to do when you are doing the battery pack estimation size estimation or battery pack design okay so after doing this estimation uh, so here is a, a, another task for you guys you can do it on your own so you can take a screenshot of this and you can compare the values uh, this is just like an extra task i kept it over here so you can take any of the cells here my suggestion is like uh, go with a 5 amp power cell this particular cell so this particular cell is having like a capacity 5 amp power and here they have given the width length and thickness because in the previous case we are using the lithium cobalt oxide cell but in this example it is nickel manganese cobalt cell okay so you can observe the difference what will happen if you are using the nickel manganese cobalt cell and what if you are using lithium cobalt oxide cell what's happening with the number of cells required and what's happening with like pack mass and pack volume and all the stuff okay so here what are all the requirements like you they have given like you or this one weight weight they have given and they also have given like energy density so you can uh, compare your uh, calculation with your energy density values and yeah it will be good to do this calculation you will get a clear idea what is the difference between these two cells okay that will be a good task for you guys yeah you guys can do now also and you can put your answers in the chat box okay so you can take a screenshot of this and uh, you can just put the answers in the chat box so the final part i won't take much time on this uh, which is the cell testing after doing all this uh, calculation and all these things next level will be like uh, cell testing so we have to do the cell testing so how we can do the cell testing so there are like uh, different parameters we have to do understand how the cell is behaving with respect to discharge rates that is called as a rate discharge character characteristics and we also have to understand like how the cell is behaving for a dynamic stress test or like like i mean like uh, in real case scenario we'll be having some profiles will be like this it will be like non linear profiles it will continuously varying with respect to time okay so for that conditions how the cell will be varying and how the cell voltage is varying with respect to temperature and how the cell voltage is varying with respect to state of charge so all these things we have to study and then only we have to select a particular cell for a battery pack without doing or without studying all the cells we can't go directly with the battery pack building okay so in order to do these things what we have to do exactly so we have to do some uh, simulations and real time testings so coming to the simulations there are like many types of simulations available to understand the lithium ion cell behavior like electrochemical electrochemical models or uh, equivalent circuit models and uh, uh, neural network methods so there are different types of uh, simulation models available so here the, what i am showing is the model for equivalent circuit model so the what it will do is like uh, for a given current input profile it will give you like uh, how the open circuit voltage is varying with respect to time how the soc is varying with respect to time how the internal resistance of the cell is varying with respect to time and state of charge and how the temperature of the cell is varying with respect to uh, current profile and how your cell voltage thermal voltage is varying so all this parameter can be studied in this particular simulation and yeah the results will be something like this if you look at over here this is the profile we are, i have given as the input the current profile so for this particular current profile this is the cell terminal voltage how it is behaving and this is the cell terminal temperature so initially it is at 20 degree celsius but finally it reached like uh, 26 degree celsius so approximately like 6 degree celsius has been increased okay and initially the soc is at 100 percentage but after like a 1400 or 1180 milliseconds of the time 1180 seconds of time it has to come it has come to like 80 percentage state of charge 
and these like open circuit voltage and internal loss internal resistance losses and capacitance and r1 values so these all things we can understand by uh, doing these simulations okay so yeah with this uh, we'll, uh, i think we came to the end of the session i think i have covered all the topics uh, which we kept on the webs uh, like on the schedule okay if you have any doubts you can post in the chat box and like i told you right you can do this particular example yeah you can keep the answers in the chat box you can cross check with the values also if you want me to do that i will do it will take just like uh, five more minutes of time so please do let me know your uh, answers on the chat box otherwise like uh, we are uh, done with the session so yes so thanks for attending the session if you want to learn more about this kind of simulations and all the stuff because this is like a very basic course if you want to learn in depth about all these things there are like a level 2 and level 3 courses available i think uh, soros can give you like a better understand i mean like a better details or brief details about the courses so yeah once again thank you everyone for attending the session suraj suraj i think uh, he lost his internet just give me 2 minute guys So meanwhile, I'll try to take the questions from the chat box. I think some people has done the calculation. Yeah, it seems like we need like two not two six, two not two point six cells, something like that. Yeah, it's good that you have done the calculation. Uh, there is a question from uh, Proful: whether battery discharge pattern change over long periods of use and large number of charging and discharge cycles. Exactly. the discharge pattern for sure it will change i have shown you some graphs right how the operating region will decrease if you are operating at high discharge rates your operating region will be decreased so it's not suggested to continuously operate your uh, cell at high discharge rates so that will affect your uh, cell life and also like a uh, behavior of the cell uh, there is a question from here how do we get to know of the upcoming related webinars related to ev i have subscribed to the channel but no uh, i think suresh can give you more details on that uh, i think he will be joining now he is having some internet issues is the thickness of the shell of the lithium ion cylinder i didn't get your question uh, clover uh yes pavan uh, in the task they have given only like energy density Okay, guys. Ah, uh, thanks, everyone. I think ah, uh, Suraj can't join. Ah, uh, he's having some internet uh, issues. 
uh, thanks everyone for attending the session yeah for the doubts or inquiries regarding the further courses uh, you can uh, mail uh, to the decibels lab you can look into the lms.decibelsrack.com for further details and all the stuff and there will be a quiz update uploaded in the lms by evening so you have to do that quiz in order to get the certificate so it will be up by evening so once again thanks for thanks everyone for attending the session thank you And we forgot to tell you that uh, there will be a feedback form available in the LMS. Please do give your feedbacks. And please do take the quiz. If you complete those two tasks, then only you'll, I think you will be getting the certificate. Thank you.